think we're live. I think so. It hasn't started on my screen yet. But it hasn't started on mine either. I'm just going to go over here to be sure. Are we good? Oh, we're good. We're live. Oh. Mm. Oh, I'm, it, I didn't know my sound was on on my phone. Sorry about that, folks. We're live. Hello, hello, welcome, everyone. Welcome. I've got the stream up, but there's an ad playing. Oh, excellent. That's, that's, what, that's all Quinn cares about, the money. That's yep. what he does this for. You found me out. It is live. Thank you. Great. So Chad is working Perfect. as well. I don't Wonderful. know if Chad is working on the screen or not. I, I tried to figure it out, how to set up uh, that it would show Chad on stream, but it doesn't. You can get the chat up on OBS, I think. It. I think I did. Maybe. It just isn't. Mm. Yeah, that's chat. That's super chat or donations. It's just not. Maybe it's the order of the layers. Let's see. Professionalism. Oh, yes, of course. That's why people come to our content. Oh, yeah. Great. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Hope everybody is doing well this uh, this Sunday. Oh, my. What's up? <laughs> the, uh, the, the, live, the, live, the live stream video is showing about... Uh, about 50 different multiverses of OBS. Oh, yeah, no, I, I realized it was going to kind of go Matrix there if I tried to fiddle with OBS, <laughs> but uh, it's fine. It's all fine. But, yeah, here we are. We're going to be ranking as many frays as we can. Yep, we have um, all 11 of them on screen. That is all that. Yeah, all, all the 11. Phrase. The only phrase that exists. Yep. I do have the appendix right here. Let me see. I don't even know where they Oh, there they are. House Frey has its own section in the appendix. I didn't realize that. Does. And I've got my special list. Oh, that's good. Hmm. Oh, oh all, they're the, just... all the notes. I'm ready. I told Somebody you. Just I'm just the eyes and ears. That's good to see. Okay. Awesome. Just so everybody knows, we're going to give it a, a couple minutes, let <clears throat> people trickle in, then we're going to start yeah. the ranking proper. I think before we start, uh, I am going to ask a question to the people watching. 21 people watching. Hello. Um, I want to say, uh, for Americans only in the audience, where is Alt X from? What is his accent? Because uh, I legitimately just discovered this in conversation with Fantasy before this. Let us know. Jingle Bell is my name. Right. My name being Fantasy feels wrong. I feel like I'm stealing. I can't. You are too, all of Fantasy. Much. I can't You're... just be fantasy. So that's you can be Quinn. That's true. I can't be fantasy. Though even me being Quinn know? presents problems. Because there's, there's other Because Quinns. there's another Quinn. Oh, someone said British. British. See, I'm not crazy. I, I thought he was British, but apparently he's no not. No clue. Australia, South African. South African's a good uh, guess. That is because it's similar to uh, Australian. It's Australia. Canadian? Okay, I feel at this point some people are just... Is it, he's Australian, right? Or Kiwi? He's, I, he is, I don't know. He, you Quinn, know better than I do, apparently. Quinn thought he was British. Because I yeah. was saying for my Alt Shift X April Fool's video that I tried to capture his cadence, but I didn't want to bother. I didn't want to do the accent because I'd ruin it. And Quinn said, accent? He's British, isn't he? No, I, I respect the, the many different British accents as an avid Love Island UK viewer. <laughs> so. Oh, no. It's he's the greatest terrible. show ever made, so. I haven't even dipped my toe into that. It's horrifying, but it's like watching a train wreck. It's wonderful. Middle Earth does Grey seem angry. Tim. Oh, yeah. Hi, Grey Race, Tim. Southern Hemisphere. Hmm. Also, if you note, uh, Aegon is in a little prison down here because for some reason, exporting him and importing his image was trying to kill my computer. But all these others did fine. So mm. apologies to Jingle Bell. Like the, the, the most innocent fray. Yep. Doesn't belong there. Rightfully imprisoned. Your Photoshop knows. My, Keep him away from the rest of these scumbags. I don't know anything about my Photoshop, so this is... I am in uncharted waters here. Oh, I can I can change the color gradient. That's kind of nice. Hmm. Come in, come in, everyone. We got... Oh, 44, 49 that's pretty people. good. Beautiful. Great, so do we want to get up. started? I think we should. Okay. Let's begin. I assume with the man men. himself. And to see Quinn the GM. All right, yeah. Alder Frey, Lord well. himself. Oh, no. Okay. I've just encountered a problem. 
Uh, what? What is it? It's all good. I will figure this out now. I have to add a file real quick because Walder is attached. Okay, well, we don't want any uh, dead air, so... Uh, True. So let's let begin discussion. Yes. Um, so, first off, we've got to work out how we're going to rank them. What are we basing it on? I'm thinking sure. we're going to base it on just how, you know, how scummy they are. You know, how... how what what oh, they have S-tier to provide being to the, the scummiest? Oh, should we do it like I was thinking F tier scummiest. Oh, okay. And S- I like F tier is like wholesome. Sounds good. So F tier is literally there's not a positive trait at all. Yeah. Right? So for someone like Hostine Frey, he's a you know, he's a thug, but he's described as being the strongest Frey. So there's something there. There's something there's like there. he's good. there's something that brings him up to an E. Whereas another character would just be it's nothing. They don't provide anything. I, I would agree with that idea of ranking them. And Hostine's going to win the Battle of Ice, so there, he's got that going at least. But we'll get to that later, I assume. Mm. I mean, well, subverting expectations. Exactly. So stupid. We defeat Stannis. Hello, hello, Tim. Hello, Tim. Thanks for coming. Thank you, everyone, for coming. This is awesome. Okay, so Walder Frey. Yes. Let's start with the cons. Uh, all the way back to the Mystery Night story, he is a whiny little child. Even as a child, he's insufferable. So I, I've got a point in his favor, specifically from the Mystery Night. Oh, go on. He, I think, is canonically stronger than Baylor Breakspear. That is an absurd. Uh, an absurd. Baylor comment. Breakspear did not survive. An encounter with Dunk, while Walder oh. did, and they were both on opposing mm. sides and had some degree of his hostility directed towards them. Oh, and and in a uh, in Dunk's case, imag- imaginative hostility. Yes, he wanted to correct. throw him down a you well. You wanted to throw him down a well. Okay, so I, he's I got suppose that. that's a point in that's a point in Lord Walder's favor. Um, yes, exactly. He he's like a cockroach. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he can't die. Exactly. He just gets away with everything. So yeah, in fact, I actually have that under prose. I've just got on the grind. Good. On the grind is correct. That's... He is. He has that Frey grind set. He's just so... obsessed with providing, How many kids you know, does he have? alliances, marriages. How many kids does he have? Let me see. First of all, I, oh, I, this is... I should I, not have looked at I the counted, appendix. I counted that in terms of all blood descendants, it's over 110. Jesus. In terms of children, it's something like 20? Okay, so I think that's a a point in his favor, generally. That he can produce children. That he's produced that many. Not that it's a good or bad thing, it's just impressive at his age. For medieval medieval times, it is a good thing. True. Good point. Mm. I hope Mm. no one's eating watching this stream, by the way, while we talk about how... Yeah, it's fair. How potent Lord Walder's <laughs> seed is. <laughs> All right, moving on. So, moving on. Okay, here's, uh... here's, an- here's another con, right? Robert's Rebellion. So moving on from him being a kid. Mm-hmm. Robert's Rebellion, he turning up late to the battlefield, obviously that was intentional. He wasn't being lazy. He was waiting to see who yeah. would win. Because that was the arguably the decisive battle. Mm-hmm. And if Rhaegar had won, he would have been like, we made it. We were going to side with you. Oh, oh, we're a bit late. Sorry. Yeah, he's he's holding his cards close to the vest and just he's playing both sides to see if, who comes out on top. <laughs> exactly. He is Mac from Always Sunny. Exactly. Which is a, another point in his favor. That's true. I Smart. do like Mac. He's intelligent. A, a lot of the phrase are described as being dim-witted mm-hmm. and and sort of stupid, but Walder is clearly a cunning man. Yeah. That's it's interesting. He's got like kind of the almost like little finger type intelligence of just being very cutthroat if not very like well read or scholarly yes yes and um even with you know w- when the tullys when hosta tully and rob and so on rising up against the lannisters he- he's doing the same thing as in robert's rebellion he's saying eh, well i don't know you know my liege lord has called me but do i serve him or do i serve the crown you know yeah and uh hence why there needs to be negotiations between him and catelyn for sure. Uh, Rob's forced to cross the Green Fork. And also... And again, it... Go yeah, on. going forward, I think that... It, correct me if I'm wrong, with the death of Aemon in Feast, is he the oldest character 
in our story? He is, I believe, by... I don't count book, Blood Raven. He... Blood Raven is not still yeah, alive. No, 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 no. <laughs> by the latest book, I think, Walder Frey is 92? Mm-hmm. I don't know so... if anybody's older than that. No, because Eamon is like... Eamon is 100, 102. Right? Yeah, so no, I think he may be the oldest. And I think he he's is. described as I think at that point he's lost he's lost he's losing his sight and has sort of began to lose his hearing. Um but he's just clinging on to life, like I said, like a cockroach. Mm-hmm. Hmm. He's tough to place. Yeah. I mean well, I mean we're sort of forgetting we're not talking about a major thing, which is the Red Wedding. I so, that's before, Stark before propaganda. The... This was Rob Stark <laughs> ripped out Jingle Bell's throat with his wolf teeth. Yeah, Rob Stark turned into a wolf, and all all the Northmen turned into wolves. Yeah, so a very very strange lie to come up with. Of everything they could have said, they decided to make up some furry fantasy. Yeah, they could have come up with something better. But I guess the architect did die, so that's not really that's their true. fault. Um. So before before the Red Wedding, he's sort of. He's annoying, he's slimy, he's very uh, self-centred, um, doesn't seem to have much honour or loyalty or anything, but he's quite intelligent. Um, but then when the Red Wedding hits, when he gets um, embarrassed and, you know, we know he's a man who holds on to grudges, he just goes, okay, I'm going to reach out to Tywin, Roose Bolton, we're going to plan a massacre. And he knows that he's going to break guess right. He knows that, you know, his slaughtering unarmed men and women he, but he doesn't care like he's described as watching the massacre take place greedily he's enjoying it like he's watching a movie right digging into his popcorn he's enjoying himself yeah uh, so clearly quite sadistic um and not just in the sense of it's it the red wedding isn't just about this one slight and being opportunistic and siding with the lannisters it sort of goes back to what i talked about in my video about how um, many of the older houses think that the phrase are up-jumped coal collectors, their new money, their new nobility, and mm -hmm. Walder thinks that he's always looking down at him and sneering at him, and this is his chance to rise above all of them. So it sort of goes beyond even the slights he's taken in his life, or perceived slights at least. It goes to him feeling like his entire family, uh, family legacy, dynasty is always being looked down upon, and this is his chance to rise up. Yeah, he's very much got a chip on his shoulder, and I think that's just a massive part of the character in the house as a whole. It's yeah. Is that the last time we see him, like on page? I think yeah. Storm of Swords I, is the I last time we is. see him because I, I just reread Feast, itself. and I remember a lot of phrase, but I don't remember seeing Walder. Uh, he's he's mentioned as you know in the background as just chilling at the twins. He's probably enjoying himself. Mm. That uh, makes sense. It, okay. What do you think? What, what, where, where do you think in the ranking? Because I've been talking my face off. So my thinking is he's, he's tricky to rank because I think I could make a case for him being F tier. I can make a case for him being S tier because he's Ooh. both like the person who is the orchestrator of the Red Wedding and has stabbed all these people in the back and has just generally been not great his entire life. But also he's kind of been like, I don't know, to a degree, he's done everything that a medieval lord is expected to do for his family. And That is true. At a point, it's interesting to examine when those slights you've mentioned add up enough and how much, I don't know, that See, even the uh, Red Wedding I'm... could be construed as not entirely him, because I forget who it was who was the architect. Is that Blackwalder? Well, there are several architects. So mm -hmm. Ty Tywin Lannister... It's hinted that he gave it his blessing, that he didn't necessarily come up with it, but he said, yes, let's do this, and then he tries to distance himself from it. Sure. Um, we know that Roose Bolton helped organise it. Um, Lothar Frey, Lame Lothar, helped organise it. Lame Lothar, that was it. Uh, and Ryman, as the heir, after Severin's death, was also involved. But I think Walder... I, I think it's it's implied that Walder is the one who sort of concocted it. So he, he didn't necessarily organise it or put the sort out the details, but he was like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Let's arrange a wedding. Let's, Because I believe it was it's Tyrion says that he believes Walder Frey is the one who hatched the egg. So, mm -hmm. 
but yeah. actually, you see, because I was thinking, I'm thinking D at the moment, just in terms of, just in, you know, F for being scummy, but then E and D for, you know, putting his family first and being intelligent and, you know, um, but you could argue, was the Red Wedding intelligent? Yeah, I don't, I was thinking C personally, just for mm. the mix of the two. And I think that is a, he's a pretty good, like, baseline for, like, yeah, because uh, another, praise, but, he is the baseline. Yeah, in fact, we can we can delve into the Red Wedding a bit more later, but in terms of betraying Rob Stark, that's not necessarily stupid based on the mistakes Rob Stark, Rob Stark was making. But in terms of, you know, um, breaking guest right and assuming there would be no huge societal consequences to that, that's kind of dumb on his part. But we'll definitely get into that later when we're exploring uh, some of the other architects of the Red Wedding. So where do we think we're going to place Lord Walder? Mm, I, I think let's go... I'll let you decide. I'll let you decide. Ooh, I think I, I like your instinct of D tier, I think. D. And D, I'm going to move yeah. the pictures around for all the other ones, but I've discovered that Lord Walder is stuck to the page because of how I made the document. So <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. not going to tear it all apart on stream. So he's got family values and he's on the grind and he's a cunning man. But he's also a murderous scumbag. So let's go D. I'd agree with that. So if who do we want to go next? Frey is D, that says a lot about some of these other characters, doesn't it? Yeah, really. I think next up, I think we should just go with an S tier straight away. Oh, okay. Let's that jump being in. Jingle Bell. The stallion that mounts the world. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to say about Jingle Bell. I mean, he is just, he might be the most innocent Frey. I think so. I think because... he's the gold standard. He is the gold standard. He he's just he's wholesome in every way. I mean, he, he he's clearly a, a man. He's described as being a lackwit, so clearly he has sort of you know special needs. Um, sure. He's handicapped in in some way, and the phrase you know he's not married. He has no children, so the phrase sort of dress him up as a jester and laugh at him probably uh, laugh at what they must consider to be funny antics, uh, and. They they hide him away. I think Walder Frey mentions that he hides Jingle Bell away every time he's hosted a king. So yeah. they, they they treat him very horribly. For and someone, then he's you know. him being rolled out at the red wedding is just kind of an insult. Yes. And then he yeah. dies for and that insult. He does because was it you know we were talking about Lord of um talking about Walder having family values, but when Catelyn threatens to cut his throat, he says, um, "What does he say?" I'm just picturing says, the TV show, the wife. But... Yeah, in, in the, yeah, he, in TV show he says, uh, "I'll find another," doesn't he? That doesn't make sense with. Mm -hmm. He says, "I have others." I think in a book. He said, "Oh yeah." So. Catelyn says, "I'll cut your wife, your son's throat," and he says, "That's not a son. That's a grandson, and I have others." So he 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 considers him to be the most useless. Yeah. Um, but again, it's actually very... pretty high in line for inheriting the twins. He is, but I, I imagine, I imagine it would have skipped him. Yeah. Had he still been alive, and if everyone before him had died, no one would be rallying behind uh, what they would call a lackwit. But he just, he, yeah, he just seems like a nice person. He's not malicious. Obviously, he's not involved in a red wedding. Um, and it's a very, very, very grim, dark, you know, death for him. He sort of this poor, yeah. sort of special needs uh, man. Shall I get into my, one of my favorite theories? Oh, that he's the stallion that mounts the world. So you said that earlier, and I just thought. So I, th I thought you were just throwing out. Let me hear this. No, this is, there's actually like kind of merit to this, and I actually quite like it. Okay, um, I thought it was just a meme. I thought the joke was just <laughs> was just that phrase. Go on. So if we think about the prophecy that Danny gets in book one, the stallion who mounts the world, there's supposedly Rago, her son. Uh, there are a lot of lines in it. There are a lot of very specific kind of descriptors of this person, and one of them in particular, I guess, made somebody think of Jingle Bell. Uh, that being, quote, the bells in his hair will sing his coming, uh, and the milkmen in stone mm. tents will fear his name. And then if we read more of the prophecy, it tends to line up uh, pretty closely to the Red Wedding, like a lot more so than I would expect. Uh, to specifically read the whole prophecy, um, so the first part doesn't quite apply because it says, swift is the wind he rides, behind him his kalisar covers the earth, that could be the million phrase. Uh, men mm -hmm. without number with arachs shining in their hands like blades of razor grass, knives at the Red Wedding. Uh, mm -hmm. Fierce as a storm, this prince will be. His enemies will tremble before him, and their wives will weep tears of blood and rend their flesh in grief, which is oh. exactly what Cat does at the Red Wedding. 
because we see Stoneheart later with the scratches on her face and the bloody yeah. tears. Um, let me see. And the prince is writing, and he shall be the stallion who mounts the world. So, Aegon's coming back. Yeah, so Aegon is the time-traveling fetus that has gone back, apparently, <laughs> into Walder's, I guess that would be, uh, daughter-in-law. I mean, Which is confirmed, essentially. So I think that I think it's an easy yes tier, personally. I mean, if 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 Eric Dondarrion gave his life force to Catelyn, can Catelyn give her life force to Jingle Bell? Oh, that's her final redemption. I like that. Bring it full yeah. circle. Yeah, that's that's literature right there. And, and death changes you. You know, everyone's talking about Jon Snow. He's going to stay dead. It's Aegon who's coming back. You're right. You must be right. Poor Jingle Bell. The fool who has promised. And honestly, fool coming back from the dead. That uh. That comes uh, fairly close to one of my favorite characters in the series, Patchface. Oh, 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 oh. We're making be connections like a, here. A Patchface 2.0. Mm. Or almost. Patchface is like... a servant. Patchface is a servant of the Drowned God. Jingle Bell becomes a servant of the Law, the Lord of Light. So, so hear me out. What if, what if he's <laughs> like the reverse of Patchface? Because Patchface was this brilliant mm. kid who they found in Volantis, I think it was. <gasps> And then yes. he comes back and he's like different. He's changed. Yeah. He's a shell of his former self. What if he Jingle Bell comes a, back a, and he's like yeah. fully like the greatest lord ever? He's like he's just like super intelligent. Yeah, the stallion who mounts the, the world. Of light. Wow, Fragon, correct. Carl Karstark in the chat. I love that. Yeah, Fragon. Fragon. We just made a new theory. Yeah, I think we did. I, I think he's... Oh, wow. I'm I'm open oh, to continuing discussion on him, but I am just moving him to S tier just for yeah, the no, sake of Yeah, no, I mean, that's with, without saying. Oh, yeah. That's without saying. So in the same way that everyone that annoyingly comments horse on every Glidus live stream, uh, is Jingle Bell going to be our one? <laughs> yesterday it was Is Beans, which was also quite good. Did you see their <laughs> stream yesterday? It was great. I, I, I caught... A bit of it, but it was like 2 a.m. when it started. That's fair. Um, it was like I shouldn't have been awake, but I was. Understandable. I think I, I saw I your video been... mentioned in a super chat there. There's a super chat. Oh, oh yeah, no, in that, in that stream. Not really? A, oh, not on this one. So all Shift X is aware. I all Shift think... X is aware. Oh, of course. Yeah, not, Come on, not man. Uh, I w- I wasn't targeting uh, that guy. He's a good guy. I was no, targeting yeah. the scumbag all Shift X. But I think I do think that there's, I've I may have sold myself on this jingle bell thing, the same way I did with Victorian. Because I do, I mean, the video I did yesterday uh, it was a joke, but I do kind of believe he could be the Valencar now. <laughs> you've you've like persuaded yourself. Yeah, because like it, it just matches Victorian the in. death of his previous wife perfectly, and it would be like mm. ideal revenge for him against Euron. And, like, once Cersei's tears have drowned her, that could be the Ironborn. You're unsubscribed as a drowned crow. It's Tara High. It all makes sense. Yeah, no. All right, it, let's it, move on before we go insane. Yeah, that's fair. So, who's next? Uh, next up, okay, so let's go for just a complete scumbag now. Okay. Uh, Ryman Frey. He's You're going to the... have to point him out to me. <laughs> Third row down on the left. Third row on the left. Got him. Chubby boy. So, Ryman Frey is, well, was the heir to the twins until uh, a few Did he crow. die at Oxcross? No, 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 you're thinking of Stevron. I am. Stevron is the second row on the right. Mm. So, Stev- Stevron's the one who was ruled as heir, and he's sort of, he's quite, he's, he's quite sort of polite and reserved, and he was raised in family values the same way as Walder Frey was. Sure. Uh, Ryman wasn't. R- Ryman doesn't have any of that. He is selfish, stubborn greedy gluttonous and a bit of an idiot because as we know from jamie during the um during the siege of river run uh ryman's meant to be in charge of the fray forces and he's doing a terrible oh, job oh yeah i i knew that was familiar he's, i just read feast he's drinking and spending time with ladies of the night and he's mm-hmm. like giving <laughs> giving rob's like you know giving rob stark's a crown to the women he's sleeping with and just being a weirdo like that. Yeah, that's, that's not great. My my main thought with him is, is he an F tier or is he an E tier? Like, is he the worst of the worst? I mean, I'd say there are worse... Actually, 
Oh, that's a good point. Let me have a look at my notes. I have no pros for him, literally just cons. So yeah. my cons are he's stupid, <laughs> but not in a wholesome way like Jingle Bell. No. Um, yeah, he's stubborn, he's greedy. Um, he is... So in the epilogue of A Storm of Swords, A Storm of Swords, Merit mentions him as an architect, one of the Red Wedding architects. Oh, okay, and he that says was that, what I was going to say. Yeah, go ahead. He says that the Red Wedding... That Ryman was using the Red Wedding to determine the loyalty of his family and who deserves to stay at the twins. Because say what you will about Walder Frey, he has room for everyone, right? Mm-hmm. The idea is that even if he doesn't like you or he doesn't remember your name or you're a bastard, you are still allowed in the twins. Like, he, he watches and he gets a marriage pact for you. He looks out for everyone. Maybe a cut apart from Jingle Bell, I guess. But um, Ryman apparently was just like, okay, the people who aren't involved, you know, they're out the twins. Yeah. Uh, they're getting kicked out when I'm Lord. I'm, I'm so so yeah. So this wasn't a he wasn't performing the red wedding out of some sort of you know cowardice. No, he was just trying to assess his family. And this picture was, of was, the Maiko yeah. is uh, just really a looker that I found on the wiki here. Yes, <laughs> not very flattering. No. Um. Yeah. He's he's. And I will also say at the red wedding, not only does he is he in some way behind organizing it. He murders a character during it. He kill. He's the, he's the man who kills Daisy Mormont. Oh, okay. Who hmm. I believe is the daughter of Lady Mage Mormont. Uh, yeah. And you know she's obviously unarmed, unarmored. She stays behind at the feast. She doesn't go on with the uh, everyone during the bedding ceremony. And what happens is Ryman bursts in when the massacre begins, and he buries an axe in her stomach. Jesus. So he's actively involved in the murder. Yeah. uh, Which is, you know, pretty horrible. So, to try to think the opposite of this, to think, I'm playing devil's advocate, we're going to get the positives on the great Mm -hmm. Ryman Frey. I think he saved the Blackfish's life. I think if River Run had been besieged by a more competent military commander, (laughs) Blackfish might have been dead. And I like the Blackfish quite a bit. That's true. That's that's a good point. He did his incompetence was good for the Blackfish, and it was great for Jamie's character development too. To, oh yeah, in he's he's the one who Jamie uh, bitch slaps right with his yes yeah hand. he's in he the show brings out the not. best in others I think, and I think that's something yeah. we need to reward him for. That's true. He 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 makes Jamie a better person. Um, yeah. Um, there there is one more point. Which is his father Stevron dying is considered suspicious, hmm. but I don't think Ryman is the one behind it. I think it's someone else mm. who we'll talk about later. Um, gotcha. But actually, no. The other thing I was going to say was um, I was when I was looking <laughs> looking back at everything Ryman's done in the books, and which isn't much, but apparently, and you probably remember this from reading Feast recently. Uh, apparently, he like angrily or drunkenly or something rode up to River Run on a horse basically saying okay enough games I am going to kill Edmure for real this time blah 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 and the blackfish shot a, an arrow which hit the horse <laughs> and sent it bolting and Ryman went flying off that's and awesome since then everyone's just like taking the piss out of him I think I've convinced myself on E tier for this guy yeah he's and he's then... too he's like he's almost like comic relief I think he gets killed by Stoneheart right Yes, he is Which hanged is... Off, off page. Yeah, that was what I thought. Fitting Just death. like so many others. Just like Brienne. Mm-hmm. What Arguably Brienne more died? fitting than... Uh... Yeah, rest in peace, Brienne. Yep. And, Could and be a Podrick. basis man. And Podrick. And Sir Hyle Hunt, whose existence I'm constantly forgetting. Yeah, that's fair. Because she had a couple companions that just died, and I keep thinking that Hyle died too, but no, he made it there. He's there, he's there. Okay, yeah. so yeah, let's go E. Let's go. He seems good. And if I could get him to center correctly. He's a scumbag, he's stupid, ah, he hasn't got any of like the family values or the cunning that brings Walder up, but his incompetence means that he's not as dangerous as some of the other phrase. Yeah, I like Kyle in the chat mentioned Jamie kills him by sending him home indirectly. So yeah, he did kind of do that mm. paper for Stoneheart. He did, yeah. And of course, him getting killed by Stoneheart means that Stoneheart and the Brotherhood have access to Rob's crown. True. Because Ryman was holding on to it. 
Oh, I forgot about that. Because that, that mm-hmm. Lady Sonart has that when Brienne gets there. So yeah, I guess that happens earlier than I thought it did. I assumed it was like end of feast, but I guess it wasn't. Or I guess it was near end of feast, but not the very end. Also, uh, somebody in the chat's asking which is S. That is Jingle Bell, Aegon Frey. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Who is next? Um, do you want to choose? How about... What about Pataire Pimple? Pataire. Pataire Pimple. <laughs> everyone, hit us with a Pataire in the chat, everyone. Yeah. Give us your best um, Roy Doltrice impression in the chat. I've, actually, I've never listened to the audiobooks, but I feel like I need to at some point. I've, I've only listened to clips. Yeah, they just fair. got hit with an ad, a mid-roll ad. I also just got hit by one of them. <laughs> On a live stream, this is outrageous. Yeah, this is outrageous. I, I apologize, guys. I didn't Casey know YouTube Oliver. would do this. Um, right, so Peter Pimple, Pattaya Pimple. Yes. Um, so he's an interesting one because we don't really, he doesn't really do much in the books, but we learn from Merit what he does at the Red Wedding. Oh, yeah, so just to clarify, um, Peter is Ryman's uh, son, his third son. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's described as being very ugly and warty and pimply. And uh, when he's 10 years old, he marries like a 30 year old lady. Wow. And his daughter by her is Pera Frey. And everyone thinks Pera Frey is very obviously uh, Blackwater's <laughs> daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, but Peter is, again, we don't know too much about him, but at the Red Wedding, he is tasked with. Uh, by Ryman, because no, not Ryman. Sorry, by Lothar, because Lothar Lothar is the one who hands out specific tasks for different phrase. Uh, Peter and Mera are tasked with getting the Great John drunk, uh, so drunk that he can't fight back and he mm-hmm. can be captured. And it fails, and both Mera and Peter fall unconscious. Oh, um, wow. But it's it's the morality part is interesting to talk about because he doesn't organize the massacre he doesn't take part in it he doesn't kill anyone he was just assigned with get a powerful like seven foot warrior drunk enough so that we can do the rest yeah um but he still takes part in it out of fear because he mm-hmm. does where he knows ryman's going to take over soon when Balder dies and he doesn't want to get kicked out of the twins interesting so very they... much sort of no go on no go ahead i uh... that's interesting i, I was going to say very very sort of um Following orders. I'm only following orders. That's yeah. what Merritt was essentially saying it in the episode. So I didn't do anything wrong. Morality of that, but uh... <laughs> yeah. So he sort of represents the sort of the weak, cowardly phrase who are almost sort of I don't know. I don't. They're not. They are not as bad as those who organize. Uh, the massacre and take part in the murder but they go along with it out of fear for themselves they don't stand mm-hmm. up they don't run away they go along with what they know is monstrous uh and horrific uh out of fear yeah. do you know how old he was um, i think he's in he's either he's in his he's, late teens yeah, late or his teens early 20s yeah. yeah i don't think he's he's far and away not the worst and we don't know like how he would have done after that because he gets killed by Stoneheart pretty much immediately afterwards. But, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna say C. I'm I was thinking the same thing where he, of course, he is not as horrible or useless or whatever as in you know, Walder Frey or Ryman. But he still takes part in the Red Wedding. He knows it's going to happen, and he goes along with it because he's a coward, like yep. Merit. You can assume. We can assume, yes. So, yes, C. C. Yeah, I'd agree with C for that. <laughs> Just checking out the chat, there's a lots of uh, people playing about with pronunciation. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Brian, Attire. Uh, to answer Tyler's question, I don't think we get a full list of architects of the Red Wedding. I think we get a lot of people's like suspicions and some mm. insight from the Frey point of view in the epilogue of Storm. Yeah. Um, but I think that's if about want, as close as we get. If you want, uh, if you want a quick rundown, um, Pywin is the one who gives it its blessing. Walder probably came up with it and then left it to his son and steward Lothar Frey to deal with. And Lothar Frey came up with lots of the sort of specifics and we'll get into that when we uh 
talk about him. Um, and who else? And Roos Bolton organised it with Lothar, him mm-hmm. and Roos. And Ryman was involved as well. So th- those are sort of the, the, the big six, I guess. Yeah. That's a big comprehensive list. I'm I am sure planning on doing players, but... uh, a, uh, a Red Wedding video. An animated Red Wedding video. Because I didn't talk much about the Red Wedding in our uh, our history of House Frey collab. Because mm-hmm. uh, I thought, ooh, th- this could be like a proper like, long video. So keep an eye out an eye out for that, guys. That's fair. Do we have Lame Lothar here? Um... Uh, we, we don't. We don't. He's quite further down the family gotcha. tree. I, I felt like it'll be an interesting medium. One. Is Lame Lothar in the room with us right now? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so... Uh, let's go, let's go with, on the subject of, oh, actually, let's go with Stevron. Okay, I that need coordinates. Top, top, wait, hold on, no, middle right, middle right. Middle right, got it. Waldefrey's firstborn son, and the father of Ryman. So, this, he is arguably one of the few, um, some phrase. What was that? Say that again? Oh, you cut out for a second. Oh, I said he's one of the few wholesome phrase. I'd agree with that. Uh, because he's described as being, you know, polite, um, reasonable. Uh, you know, he's, he's a pretty, he's a pretty, a decent person, and merits, you know, is quite sort of regretful that um, Stevron is dead because he said, you know, under Ryman, we're all going to get kicked out if we don't do what he says, but. Um, Stevron was raised in family values. He was groomed for command. So it seems like he's... And he is, uh, you know, clearly quite a competent and brave commander because he actively, in person, he commands Frey troops during the battle yeah. in the Whispering Wood and Oxcross. So, you know, he's not sitting behind the scenes. You know, he's and not he dies fighting general. for Rob, right? He does. He gets a minor wound and... Uh, and Cold Drogo, you know, he Cold Drogo's it. He dies of a minor wound. Yeah. Or does he? Or does he? And he also, he's pretty good in terms of the meeting initially in A Game of Thrones, where uh, it's him and his dad meeting Lady Stark for the first time, and he kind of speaks up for her, which is nice, at least for a fray. Yeah, he's just a, he's just a polite, polite man. Um, uh, yeah. But, but, there is something that has to be said. Something that stops him from being sort of like S or A. Mm-hmm. Which is sure he was groomed to command, and he, you know he he has family values and so on. But why doesn't Ryman? Right, that's his son, mm. that's his heir. Ryman hasn't been raised in these values, hasn't been groomed for command. Uh, hence why he's a sort of useless, incompetent, gluttonous guy who doesn't like his family. That's ultimately that's Stevron's fault because he's that's his father. See, I'm going to take the opposite opinion on this because okay. give me the devil's advocate. Out of defense for my favorite Targaryen king, because my the most common comment on my Viserys two video is he raised Aegon the fourth. He should be listed as a bad king. I feel like at a point that makes sense. I think that also I don't know. I don't know how much he could have shaped Ryman differently in terms yeah. of. I, I'm sure like a decent amount of Ryman seems to come from his grandfather from Walder. And I'm yes. sure having both of those influences there, I think that if he naturally favors Walder more, it'd be a lot yeah. easier for him to kind of follow because after that. But the thing is, Mer- the way Merritt describes it in his, you know, internal monologue is that is that like he Ryman actively wasn't raised in those family values. Not that he didn't go along with them or he rejected them or or he was like an unruly son. It's almost as if. You know, Walder put the effort in for Stevron. Stevron didn't for Ryman. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, he is, he's got some similarities to Viserys, too, with the suspicious death. It's, mm. uh, yeah. it's interesting. It's making me like him more. <laughs> he is, yeah, he is, like, basically the only likable Frey at, at the start. Well, you know, that we first meet before we meet sort of Olivar and the others. I um, like Jingle then, Bell from the outset. I didn't need to meet him. Uh, oh, of course. Before you open the first page of A Game of Thrones, you get like a tingling sensation and you're like, Jingle Bell. Correct. This book is going to reveal something to me. We've got to make a video about that theory now. 
Yeah, I, I do. I, I made my Stallion Him Outs the World video and discovered that theory while I was like editing it, and I just wished I'd discovered it sooner. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go B. I was gonna go A. Are mm. we? Hmm. I'm being because I'm being nitpicky, aren't I? About because I'm think. You know, because mm, I'm thinking S is like beyond just wholesome. S is like. Okay, so this is like the the gold standard. It can only be reached. The gold by very standard, few. you know, Stallion and Manza World. A A for me would be like um, Roslyn, where she hasn't really done okay, anything that's, wrong. Okay, that's that's a good point. I'll and I'll, then, I'll seed yeah. you B on this. Thank you, my good man. Yes, but I, I will reserve a veto power later. Go for it. The debt will be repaid when I come out with a with a hot take, <laughs> and I'm like, you know what. Blackwater is not too bad. Yeah. Oh God. Okay. I've I've run out of phrase on the side here who I recognize immediately. I'm gonna be honest. The reason I picked Pataya Pimples because I could pick him out fairly easily you can because of pimples. pimples. And off the top of my head, I don't know what each fray looks like that well. You have not been as steeped in fray descriptions as I have. I just haven't been drawing them. I'm not going uh, insane. A gifted artist as you are. I'm not a gifted artist either, but oh yes, you are. Um, I mean, I literally like I literally I don't draw, like I don't do art. I I just did it for this channel, and it doesn't look too bad, does it? No, it looks know, quite good. Uh, it's only going to get better, I imagine, too. Yeah, some of my earlier art, my old videos are rough. Um, I'm always improving. So yeah, in fact, in that case, pick a random one, and I'll tell you who it is. Pick one I that like looks interesting. This fellow, I like his hair. I realize it's going to be delayed a second, so there might be a second yeah, or two of dead air. Chosen. We will. Actually, that narrows it down because a lot of them are bald. Bottom middle. <laughs> Bottom middle. That is... Oh, that is Rhaegar Frey. Oh, one of the pies, right? One of the pies. One of the dragon... One of the dragons of the crossing. So... Yeah. So, Walder Frey... Walder Frey's third son is Aenys Frey. Um... Oh, Which, that one. Straight off the bat, I don't know why anyone would name a kid after Aenys. Wait, the, the wait, the the picture you have, that's not uh, Rhaegar. Oh, uh, okay. Who's this oh, guy? Oh, I thought you said I thought you uh, that's Edwin. Edwin. Which one's Rhaegar? Rhaegar is middle middle row. Did you not say that? Did you I not said say bottom middle of the middle? Bottom Oh, oh my oh, god. No. I did not mean to rotate uh this guy. Hold on. You think that guy has cooler hair than the Rhaegar I character? I think so. He it his hair's described as being like dark and lank, so I try to make it look as gross as possible. I'm okay. my art is so good that everything I draw just looks amazing. That is true. I did get stuck on rotating him for a second though, but I'm I'm good. Yeah, now. no, but okay. let's. We got Rhaegar. What, what, you wanna you wanna go with Rhaegar? Yeah. So yeah, so as you were saying, there's Aenys Frey, which is you know presumably named after the second Targaryen king, um, with the worst name. So, of course. By a pretty and wide Aen margin. Aenys has two children, both named after Targaryens. Uh, Aegon and um, Rhaegar. Weird that so they kind of went like, the first and the last on, on those names. Yeah. Excuse me. So, Rhaegar is... Um, we don't actually meet him until A Dance with Dragons. Mm -hmm. That's in Davos, moment. right? Yes. The three Freys who are with um, Wyman Manderley, basically trying to arrange marriage packs and lying to his face about the Red Wedding. And Davos is angry at them. Yeah. So Although they're, they're is spreading the truth. This has been fact-checked oh, yeah, by bad. Frey Patriots as true. <laughs> <laughs> this Red Wedding story has been fact-checked. So Rhaegar Frey, it's... So, okay, so start with the cons. I'm just he... going to say this quote uh, is just not good. The young wolf, he was a vile dog and died like one. Not yes. the best. Scumbag. Calling our boy Rob a vile dog or automatically puts him below C. <laughs> um, and he goes along with the lies of, you know, the Rob Stark turning into a wolf and killing Lord Manderley's son, which is such obvious BS. He mm. doesn't come up with the lie. Jared's the one who says it. Rhaegar is described as sort of standing there with like a sardonic smile, almost like kind of mocking, you know, mockingly. Mm. 
like you know you just ima- I tried to give him like an upturned mustache and then the eyebrow raised to give him like a kind of smug look yeah um and i will say one of my only pro for him is it's not actively mentioned if he's a part of the red wedding during the red R- wedding chapter in fact the chapters around it we don't see or hear Rhaegar. we don't know if he's involved in any way um he just pops up in the dance with dragons so as far as we know you know, giving him the plus. benefit of the doubt. Who's his parent? I'm actually going to look him up in the appendix to see if they tell like where Who's he it? is at that point. So I have I have Storm beside me here. Mm. Let's see. Yeah does it does it say specifically? Because uh, I'm looking. Let me see. Too many pages in this book here. It's so, I remember, it's so, when I was reading the appendix for the first time, seeing that a fray was called, like, Rhaegar, it, was, it is funny. Wyman calls him a, a smirking worm with a dragon's name. I saw that. I really like the wordplay for Wyman there. Yeah. It's good to see some action from the author of the pink letter. Someone wrote, um, Rhaegar, Rob turned into a wolf and attacked everyone Frey. That wasn't, that was Jared Frey. Um, but and Rhaegar it's true went either way. Him. <laughs> hey, there that's a go. good April video. The real wed, the the real red wedding. <laughs> that might be next year. <laughs> okay, so who's how is Rhaegar related here? Let's see. So he's, he's the son Aenys's of Aenys? son. Let's see. And Aenys is the third son of Waterfrey. Got it. So he's a grandson, and he has children. Um, but he's a widower, and mm-hmm. he's trying to arrange a marriage pact. I have a with... pro. Oh, I, have, I have a positive. He's married to a Beesberry. Oh, that is a positive. That's a positive. But, but that, but his wife, I is either dead or must die at some point in the books, off page because yeah. he's a widower by the end. So, does it count if his wife is dead? I, I think there's some residual positive there. Just maybe there's, not as much. There's some residual. There's some residual honey in there. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. But one thing I I realized rest um, in peace. While I, rest in me, well, when I was doing these notes, I realized that so the marriage, uh, the marriage pact that the phrase try to arrange is um, so Wyman Mandalay's eldest son is uh, Wyllis or Willis, and Willis's two daughters are Winifred and Wyler. Alliteration. George loves it. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, phrase is special. Rhaegar, Rhaegar is trying to marry Winifred and mm-hmm. Willis uh, Willis Mandley is still alive but we don't know you know if he's going to have any more children if he doesn't that means in theory if this marriage oh, I see. happened in an alternate universe where he's not baked into a pie we have Rhaegar Frey as the Lord of White Harbor which is a terrifying concept that's horrifying if he's even baked into a pie that in itself is just a theory that is a theory he is one of the three Freys who Goes missing. Uh, you can see this in the uh, yeah. Fate of the Phrase video on Quinn's channel. Uh, he goes missing and is en route to Winterfell, and Wyman Manderley later appears at Winterfell with three giant pork pies and asks for a song about the rat cook What if feasting into them. What if Rhaegar Frey is Tycho Nostoris? Hmm. They both appear out Why? of nowhere <laughs> in the same area. After he vanishes, Tycho they both appears. have a bit. They, they're both described as having silky beards. I think exactly. Mm. It's possible. Do you like? Did you? Do you like the little belly I gave him? The little. I porch? do. That's pretty good. <laughs> so I'm gonna say for Rhaegar. Oh. My mm. thought was so since he is not listed as participating in the red wedding, that automatically okay. bumps him. I'd say above E and F. Yeah. I think, I, on I, a, yeah, I'm, I, I'm thinking C, personally. I, I'm also thinking C, because similar to Peter, he's aware of the Red Wedding, and he's okay with it, and he uses it to his advantage. Yeah, you know, that's fair. Clearly, but he, also, he, he wasn't the one starting these lies with Manderley as well. So No, but he, but all, all three of the phrase there, Jared, Rhaegar, and Simmond, they're all kind of... Jared's lying, but the other two are just sort of backing him up. So they're yeah. all kind of there. Going along with it, that's fair. Um, and I think I, I think, think that C, kind of fits with, with having Pataya in the same tier. Yeah, 
And you could argue him trying to get married to Winifred. That's a bit of Waldefrey grind. True. Maybe he's that's, maybe that's he deserves D. Mm-hmm. Beggy pardon? Yeah. Uh, oh, you yeah. mean the tier list? Um, yeah, I'm popping in C. <laughs> okay. Um, so on the subject of Rhaegar, I'm thinking we could quickly do his brother. Um, I don't have a picture of him. Is that Aegon um, Bloodborne? Aegon Bloodborne. He gets One a higher tier most... just for the name. Honestly, I'm thinking S tier. Remind me what he is or does. We know nothing about him. He hasn't appeared in any of the books. No character has mentioned him. He only exists in every appendix. That's awesome. In which he's described as being Aegon Frey, known as Aegon Bloodborne, an outlaw. That's all we know. He it's is an felt outlaw like the disease, called... not the game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no okay. uh, E on the end. He is just a he is just a, an outlaw called Aegon Bloodborne, and there's no context. That's awesome. I I, I really it, hope he appears. He, I hope he does. It almost feels like a George has forgotten about him, because like outlaws and rebels and brigands, that's like a big part of the Riverlands. George would like, never you would forget think... about something. Surely not. I'm like you'd think. He'd be an awesome character to have in the Brotherhood Without Banners. Like, I was, imagine I was a Frey. About to say the same thing. How cool would that be? A Frey who hates his family. That'd be awesome. Who knows I... some maybe some of the secrets of the twins and so on. You've sold me Aegon Bloodborne, easy S tier. This is we pretty much just have the Aegon tier up here. Yeah, yeah, the Aegon tier. The um two potential princes who were promised here. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, Aegon Bloodborne can... equals Arain Waters. Interesting. I haven't, I genuinely, I've tried looking for uh, Aegon Bloodborne theories, and there's barely anything out there, admittedly, because there's, like, no textual <laughs> evidence for anything he could be doing. Yeah, because he I, doesn't I exist like that in has, the text. That has to be, um, there has to be some video in there. If I, I could ever ask Martin a question, I might ask about Aegon mm-hmm. Bloodborne. Like that guy who who asked about Rorge and Biter and got like a surprisingly detailed response. I'm on the wiki backstory. now, and under the character section, it is Aegon is an outlaw. That's all. <laughs> That's it. And, and the thing is, Aegon and Rhaegar are both the sons of Aenys, and Aenys is one of the few intelligent phrase. He's he's like he's the one that Stannis says, you know, this guy's cunning, this guy's smart. Yeah, he's that's the one who commander. gets crushed by a building, right? He doesn't get crushed by a building. He falls into a a, a pit. Is where, that still at Winterfell? Um, I, yes, outside of Winterfell. I think it's... Oh, which umber is it? Is it Crowfood? Crowfood is the one who's openly siding with Stannis, right? I, I believe, believe so. so. Crowfood digs a bunch of pits, and they can't see it because there's a blizzard, and he blows the horn, and he makes it seem like Stannis' army is like right outside. Right outside. And when Hostine and Aenys come riding out... They both fall into a pit, and Hostine survives, but his horse dies, but Aenys breaks his neck during the fall. And Stannis says, oh, that's a good thing, because he's quite a good commander. He's seasoned, yeah. whereas Hostine is so stupid. I, remember, I talked about that in my uh, I, Night Lamp video, I believe. Yes, you did. Yeah. Um, and he's, Aenys is, actually, let's jump onto Aenys. So, Walder Frey's third son. Do we have a picture? He's described, yes, he's the middle, he's the top middle. Got he's it. the one with the, the, the weird beard. His beard is described as being a like a rat's tail, which is quite gross. And yeah, he's actually in a Clash of Kings. Oh. Hmm. When I was when I'm when I wrote my script for my Red Wedding video, I, I did a bit of reading of Clash, and it, him and Hostine are in Harrenhal with Roose Bolton, basically saying Rob Stark has lost this war. You know, this is pointless. Um. For some reason, yeah. they're not moving anymore, which is strange. I don't know what's happening. Hold on. I'm figuring things out. That's it's okay. all good. While you're doing that, I'll check some of the Oh, I did it. I got it. We're good. Ha-ha. I don't want to neglect the chat. Yeah, no. Uh, Aegon Bloodborne is How- Howland Reed. Possible. Big if so true. Hostine more like stupid. So Hostine more like the stupid. I'm thinking of that um, Lord of the Rings thing that's sort of become a meme now with Saruman saying, Gandalf the wise, Gandalf the fool. <laughs> yeah, everyone acting like it's a really good roast. Just saying... Does so anyone Hostine? in chat have any questions or anything Hostine that you'd like to stupid. ask? Yeah, throw some questions to throw us. Throw some questions. We'll do a little little question break your, here before we get to this guy. If your questions are, uh, why do you keep talking about the phrase, that's the best question, and I don't have an answer. 
I am planning a every single Frey explained video at some point in the future where it's just like God, ra- good luck. Rapid, rapid editing uh, every single one, including like the kids that don't do anything. I'm I, just gonna like blitz through them. That might come out after wins, honestly. <laughs> just based on how long it seems like it would take. It will come out before wins, but after the Preston Jacobs wins. Oh, fair. Oh, he did where have a trap for that yesterday. It was good. Uh, where does I the... haven't, haven't checked it yet. Yeah, I, mean, I disagree with it because I don't think the Battle of Steel is going to happen. But it's a well-written chapter. Mm. Um, let me see. Omni Walder ranks S tier. Obviously, it's just an aggregate of all Walder tiers. Which I think we only have one Walder on here right now, which is surprising. We do. We do. We needed a W tier for just every Walder. Oh, you're right. Or for Wumbo. I don't know if, if Lothar get Frey that becomes King of the Trident, would the Riverlands be renamed to Lothar Ringia? Starkiller. That is one hell of a history meme. I appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, you're right. All Freys could be evil because they'd grow up to be a Frey. That's a compelling argument, Wyman. Which of the fr- which of the named Freys die at the Red Widow? die at the red wedding does blah, let me try that again which of the name phrase die at the red wedding besides pimple boy that's from mr aptoid so um peter pimple doesn't die at the red wedding he dies after the red wedding when he's captured by the brotherhood without banners and hanged if i recall the only one who dies at the wedding itself is jingle bell or um, wrong there are there are there's one more who dies at the wedding itself there's titos frey who Got is it. killed by the hound uh, oh, I forgot that. Yeah, mm. makes sense. I forgot about the Arya yeah, chapter there. Because in 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 the show, sort of uh, the Hound knocks her out, takes her, and runs off. Uh, in the book, there's a little bit more of a Arya is being chased by Tito's prey. It's not explained why, like why a knight is like chasing after what presumably to him would be like a peasant girl. So that's kind of sus. But uh, Arya's running away from him, and then Sandor comes in and kills him with an axe to the head. And then in a dance with dragons, it's a fun callback where Sir Jared Frey, because um. Titos is Jarus' son. He says, My son was killed at the Red Wedding um, by Rob Stark as a wolf. Oh, that's awesome. Is it the hound? That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, and then uh, Sir Benfrey Frey also dies. Got Red it. Wedding. No, not at, he dies later of his wounds. And Benfrey Frey is actually the brother of Roslyn and Oliver and Perwin. So, like, the good phrase that we like. Nice. He's actually yeah. part of the Red Wedding. And the only thing we know. Uh, at what he does, the thing we know he does is he tries to grab Daisy Mormon when she tries to escape, and then she responds by slamming a tankard into his face. And then, Good for her. And then he he later dies of his wounds. So I don't know whether she basically killed him from that or whether <laughs> he. It's possible that Daisy Mormon killed Afray before being killed That's herself. That's awesome. Good for her. By just like smashing a tankard into his face and probably giving him brain damage or something. That's the dream. Are there enough phrase that they can make an American football team? I don't know how many people are on an American football team off the top of my head. I probably should. I I can't appreciate that joke. I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm more of a baseball guy personally, but. Mmm, old school. I like it. Jared's son-in-law also dies from Starkiller. Yes, yes. Um, Goodbrook, Sir Gas Goodbrook, I believe. Uh, just to clarify, I'm not like, I don't have an an, an encyclopedic knowledge of all things A Song of Ice and Fire is just that, very specifically, I have delved into all things Frey for the last few videos, so that's how I know this stuff. Um, so, American football teams are 45 to 50 players, which I think they have. Wow. Yeah. Oh, they have more than that. Oh, yeah. The phrase, the phrase in terms of adult phrase? Probably yeah, adult about, phrases. Probably, probably around about 50. There. Yeah. Because there's lots of kids. True. And then they're not all Freys as well, because then we get all the, like, Lannister Freys and whatevers. Do you believe any of the Frey women will have anything to say in the hypothetical wins? Um, in terms of, do they have any role to play? Uh, I, I think Roslyn will, because apparently mm-hmm. Roslyn has fallen in love with Edmure and she's carrying his child. And, you know, as we know from Quinn's Fate of the Freys videos... Um, video with uh, the bit about the Frey Civil War, you know, uh, Edmure could have a claim, well, Edmure has a claim to River Run, 
uh, Roslyn and her branch might, you know, support that claim because Roslyn's child would be the heir to Riverrun. Yeah, and that so in, they, in itself, uh, Edmure's child is a fray as well, or at least half fray. So I'm sure yeah. they'll have a role. Which I don't know if they has it been born yet. I don't think it has. Mm, no. Um, oh, I'm not sure. Because I know I remember. I, I, I think I, they said it was in the show, and then I I don't remember. I don't. Think they, they always get mixed book. up between um like Roslyn and Jane Westerling in terms mm-hmm. of. Two pregnant uh, women with like potentially with heirs, or you know, well, less so um, Jane, because we with Jane, it's like Sybil Spicer did her best to make sure that didn't happen. Yeah, that's um, fair. I just got an ad. Me too. Skip ads. Who's the quarterback of Team Frey? What's a quarterback again? What do they do? Aegon Bloodborne. Easy. <laughs> a quarterback is the like. Uh, almost the team leader to a degree. They're the person who, like, when the ball is snapped and thrown backwards, mm. the ball is thrown to them, and they either run it or throw it to somebody else. I'm imagining. I mean, Walder Frey is the lord. I, I'm imagining him on the on the pitch, just like like yeah. Mr. Burns, just running around. <laughs> <laughs> I, I imagine <laughs> like the, the, the general manager, the the Quinn, the yeah, GM, oh, he's, if you will. Yeah, he's he's like the yeah, he's the manager on the sidelines, like shouting. Yeah, that's fair. So, which Frey is this that we have here? This is Anus Frey. Ah, yes, yes, yes. And we can't get demonetized because that's a name. Yes, correct. <laughs> I'll put it in the subtitles. I'm sure when I do the full subtitles of however long this is going to be. Oh, good luck. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I, yeah. I won't do that. I, I haven't done it for my live stream, so <laughs> don't do that. Uh, Anus is, yeah, the third son of Walder Frey. He is a seasoned commander that Stannis... Not necessarily respects, but acknowledges, you know, acknowledges that he's a smart man. Um, and he is clearly quite cunning. Um, he takes part in the, the Harren Hall switcheroo in the Clash of Kings. When uh, Roose Bolton and Aenys sort of pretend, they pretend to get captured by uh, Vargo Hote and the Brave Companions who have switched sides to get into Harren Hall. And then they're broken out and they sort of, you know, they coup the Lannister forces inside from within, mm-hmm. if I'm remembering correctly. And then Amory Lorch is thrown into a bear pit. Um, yeah, so he's he's cunning. He's a seasoned commander. Um, in a Reek chapter, uh, Reek sort of internally describes him as being cruel. He said he uh, like he looks cruel or there's something cruel about him, mm-hmm. which is why I gave him angry eyebrows. Valid. And he, he is he is present at the Red Wedding. Um, it's not mentioned what he does. I mean, he is an old man, so he may not have actually taken part in the more active side of it, but he is there. He's like, he's described as, you know, I don't know, drinking or doing something. Mm-hmm. Also, I'm seeing apparently he met Brienne at some point. Oh, that was in Clash. Got it. Uh, I was trying to think if he met her at the point of view in Feast. Mm. But I do think... So positive on him. It's kind of the same style as uh, this fellow down here. Uh, by dying, he's helped Stannis out a good deal. He, he has. Uh, but sort of, yeah, I mean, by living, it's sort of the opposite of Ryman. By living, Ryman helped Edmure. Mm-hmm. By Edmure, sorry. Uh, Brynden. Sorry. And by dying, Aenys has helped Stannis. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, well, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking D tier, personally. I was thinking D or E, but I could I could see either way. I'd say D because he has the the fray cunning. Is Do we know what he da- did at the red wedding, or we just know he was there? We, we we know he was there, as in during a Catelyn chap uh, during the red wedding chapter, he's there like sitting at a table. But and like I said, because he's an old man, he's in his sixties, so he may not have been actively involved, but he was like sitting there. And so so yeah, he he was he was involved. Um. So he's a scumbag, he's pretty cruel and nasty, but he's very cunning and he's a good commander, so I think that boosts him above Ryman, you know. Um, but... Oh, that's interesting, fact, actually. Huh. In fact, we could... I'm looking at the, you... the wiki at the moment, and according to this, and I, I think it's true based on what I've been rereading, I don't know if we know that Aenys dies until the Theon sample chapter of Winds. I don't think he dies in Dance. Mm-hmm. That's true. So technically, his death isn't canon. It, yeah, we don't know if it, it can, happens or not because those that, chapters that could have changed. Hmm. Hmm. 
which honestly, I hope that of all of the chapters for wins, I hope that uh, that one goes unchanged because it's a good chapter. I, it's a good chapter. I mean, it was meant to be in dance, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I If I had to change the chapters from wins, I would combine the Tyrion and the Arion chapters, but that's about it. Yeah. Because both of those are pretty unnecessary in a book that's already going to be too big. Yeah. That's a discussion for another day. Yes, it is. The, uh, the hugeness of those books, the later books. Yeah. So Someone said... Some, sorry, I have to read this out. Kyle said Tom Frady. I saw that. That's excellent. That's good. Uh, we think of Deary. Um, I'm... See... I'm, let's go D. Let's go D. Got it. I'm not sure why I made that noise. That's my panic noise, apparently. Okay, he is in D. Also, here's a fun little fact for uh, Stevron and Aenys and Emmon and the sons of Walder Frey and his first wife. I've given I've given them all grey eyes because their uh, Walder Frey's first wife was Lady Pera Royce, and the Royces are described as having grey eyes. Ah, I like that detail. I noticed they yeah. have grey eyes. That's why it takes me so long to do the art because I I look at every single detail. Yeah, that's great. So let's pick someone else. Um, I'll let's let you pick, go. Let's pick the guy I'd picked earlier, and hopefully I can re-rotate Ed, him. Edwin. 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 In fact, we can kind of do a double whammy here with Edwin and Blackwater. Sure thing. Which one's so Blackwater? So Edwin, uh, Blackwater is right next to Edwin. He's the guy with the black beard. Got it. And the eyes are supposed to be scary, but they kind of look goofy. Oh, he's behind. Oh, no, hold on. Oh, God. I'm still getting it hang of this whole photoshop thing so i apologize there we go so okay we have the two of them yeah so edwin is the current as of the latest book he is the current heir to the twins because his father ryman is hanged his grandfather stevron mysteriously dies after a minor wound and he is now the heir so if walter Frey drops dead we have lord edwin good for edwin oh god what did i do Okay, we're back. Sorry. Let hmm. me find... There we go. So Edwin, um, he's he's described in uh, not very glowing terms. So Merritt calls him a cold man. Uh, and Davin Lannister, when talking to Jamie, describes him as hateful. Uh, and when we do meet, when Jamie does meet him, uh, he's very sort of... From what I remember in Feast, he's very just sort of um, a bit kind of mean-spirited, snooty... You know, a bit sour. Sour is a good descriptor. I would agree. For, um, Edwin, I think. Um, and he's a a hypocrite because there's a a bit in Feast where he says it's okay that we did the red wedding because everyone there was a traitor. And then someone responds by saying, it may be Jamie himself. I can't remember, but someone responds by you know saying, what about murdering your king? Is that not treasonous? You know, <laughs> like the whole yeah. realm thinks that. House Frey is now synonymous with treason and backstabbing. Mm. So it's kind of slimy of him to be like, no, it's not our fault. Uh, we were betrayed. Yeah, he doesn't seem great. He is also in the Red Wedding. Um, we don't know what he does specifically, but he is slapped by Catelyn. So what happens is Daisy Mormon tries to ask for ask him for a dance and this is while the range of Castamere is playing i'm not sure why she wants to dance to that song but you know <laughs> and it's he a bob. Sort of pushes it is a bit or oh, it is a bob though i'm not gonna lie the show the show mm, it did a great job with that song oh yeah but edwin pushes her away and walks off because i think he realizes you know the range of Castamere is the cue let's get ready and mm-hmm. catelyn at this point is so paranoid and anxious that she runs up to him and grabs him and she can feel chainmail under his silk and she slaps him uh, and which is there's a similar bit in the show with Bruce Bolton where he actively shows yeah. off his chainmail like as a kind of mocking guess what's about to happen and she slaps him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and from what I remember, so looking at some stuff from Merritt's perspective in mm-hmm. uh, Storm, he is described as quote thick witted, stubborn, and greedy, which not great all around. I don't know. And no. he did very directly participate in that. Maybe that meant that he was trying to kill Cat and got intercepted. I don't know. I, I'm thinking yeah, he, low for him. 
he is low um i've got another point which is this <laughs> i don't know where this will place him uh but <laughs> in my notes i literally just have the sentence wanted to kill the blackfish with poo arrows and in brackets no really That's... so from what from what i remember <laughs> From what I remember, he basically, he was saying, okay, let's assassinate the blackfish by dipping arrows in excrement and shooting it at him. And if it hits, then it'll be poisoned. And everyone just says, no, what are you talking about? Shut that's up. That's awesome. I, I, that's that, going to be points in my book, honestly. The poo arrow man. I, the given, the like, I mean, the Yunkai are kind of doing the corpse trebuchet thing. I think that's kind that's of... true. Ed- Edwin is cloth. taking... He's taking inspiration from... Uh, the slavers Please. attacking marine yeah he's a cultured um, I man would, I, I also have another point against him which is that uh as with many phrase he is a cuck unfortunately oh. uh, apparently his own brother blackwater uh everyone thinks that he's sleeping oh with yeah that's Edwin's the whole wife. issue with his branch of the family even though he's about so, to inherit yeah so similar with peter peter pimple mm-hmm. um apparently he was cucked by Black Walder, and his son Pera is probably Black uh, Walder's son. Likewise, Edwin's daughter Walder, with an A, is also Black Walder's son. Try and keep up, everyone. So, hear me out. <laughs> though. I'm, I'm hearing two positives mm-hmm. here. I think that A, the poop arrows are objectively funny and maybe not a terrible tactic if they were to hit not, people. Not the worst. It, I've heard uh, worse tactics in this series. I mean, I think people didn't oppose it because of it not working. I think they said it was dishonorable. And second thing, given the fact that his kids aren't his, I would view that as a positive, given that he is, again, described as, quote, what is it, thick-witted, stubborn, and greedy, maybe not having his genetic material be the continuance of the family, could be a yes. positive. Yes, that, that, that is a positive. Um, and also, I get the impression that Blackwater is probably better looking than him, because Blackwater is described as, like, sleeping with... His brother's wives, potentially Walder Frey's, like, eighth wife, uh, Mm -hmm. his own cousins, like, Fair Walder, uh, whereas Edwin is described as looking quite sort of sour, so I think maybe... At the very least, more, like, charismatic. Yes, yeah. At least in terms of D&D stats of it all. So that's nice of him to allow uh, his brother to give his... (laughs) Yeah. What do we got on Black Walder, since we have both of them out here? So Black Walder is sort of... um, He's there's a good line. I can't remember what it what it is exactly, but it's something along along the lines of uh, he's not just called Black Walder because of the color of his beard. Like his temperament, his personality is like black and dark and angry and edgy. Um, I have it so actually right he, here. Uh, it's from I guess Rob says this to Cat. Um, and Black Walder, that one was not named for the color of his beard. I promise you. He went so far as to say that his sisters would not be loath to wed a widower. I would have killed. Uh, sorry, I would have killed him uh, for that if Jane had not begged me to be merciful. So bad. Yes, he is. He is. He is the dangerous Frey. So if Edwin becomes Lord, that's sort of basically Walder Frey point two, probably a bit dimmer. Black Walder is like dangerous. He's yeah, actually quite. I dangerous. think a bit dimmer is just frankly better for the realm. I'd say probably, <laughs> probably. Because uh, it would, you know, but I don't get the impression Walder Frey is dim. I think he's quite a black Walder. I think he's quite yeah. smart. Um, so under the con, he does take part in a red wedding. He actively hamstrings someone. So f- what I assume, what, yeah. So it's a an unnamed member of House Vance or Vance is fighting another Frey, and Walder Fre- Black Walder comes up behind him and just like cuts his hamstring. Which is pretty scummy. And then he's described as later on he's circling Catelyn when she has Jingle Bell. So he was, unlike some of the other Freys who were there but didn't take part, he had his sword out. He was cutting down people. He was murdering people. Like his father, Ryman. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, he sleeps with his cousins and cuckolds his family members, which is a weird thing to do, just generally speaking. I would agree with that. That's just weird. Um. Uh, the pros... So I do have a couple of pros, surprisingly, even though this guy is quite villainous. Um, One of the pros is he he does fight for Rob initially. Um, Like Stevron, he's actually he's actively involved in battles. So 
uh, in the Westerlands, he scales the crag, which is the seat of House Westerling, mm-hmm. with small John Umber to oh, try wow. and take it. Huh. Which is pretty cool. That's yeah. kind of badass, I'm not going to lie. Uh, and he is quite competent because while the while Ryman and Edwin are failing to take River Run, Blackwater is in charge of the siege of Seaguard, where which is being held oh. by Lord Malister, who is refusing to you know uh, bend the knee. And he I do like House resolved... Malister. That's a side note, but me cool too. Crest. Honestly, when I when I read the first book for the first time and I looked at the appendix and I was like House Malister. That's a great name. Great I sigil. Know. I was just so and happy to see that they were in Hot D season one too. They were. I like. I like that little cameo. Yeah. But I. I, I was like, they're. They're barely in it. Yeah. I. I, I had. Brax. I, House Brax. I love House Brax. My, my boy Flemont. Yeah. Unicorn hat. That's the best. Unicorn man. I love it. Um, Sorry, so I got yeah, that sidetracked. <laughs> we're we're talking about unicorns now. Yeah. So Blackwater is. Um. He's competent. Uh, he he does actually he's you know, he's willing to go out there and fight so there's some bravery there. He's a player, uh, you know he's he 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 plays around a bit you know he he's he's charismatic, he's popular with the ladies. It's just a shame that most of those ladies are related to him <laughs> uh, uh, by marriage or by blood. Carl Karstark in the chat. Uh, one of my favorite comments of the day. That's actually 100% accurate probably, and I love it. House Vance is surely a nod to fantasy author Jack Vance, whose magic system was an early model for D and D, and it's an anagram mm. of Vecna, which is a D and D bad guy. Uh, yeah, no, that book, The Dying Earth, has been on my read list for forever. I'm probably gonna read it over this past summer. Um, but I, I knew House Vance was a loving nod to Jack Vance, but I did not know uh, his magic system influenced. Yeah, it's like the whole idea, of, like That's spell cool. slots, was like invented by him in this book. That's awesome. I'm I'm going. I mean, I'm going on a sort of fantasy binge right now because I've been so bad with reading books, and now that I have a channel, I'm like, okay, Fantasy Haven. I need to. I'm going to do a Song of Ice and Fire, but I need to do other stuff as well. I, I'm, just, I'm like... currently reading Stormlight, which is quite good. Uh, but once mm. I once I finish that, I'm probably going to do Dune and then Dying Earth. Is yes. What I thought. Oh, that's a good point. Okay. Clement Brax is married to a fray, so I wasn't completely off topic. Oh yes. Look at me. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. It was all planned in advance. He is married to a Frey. Nice I one. I forgot about that. Um, but I, I'm currently... I've just started the uh, first book in the Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn trilogy. Oh. Um, the Dragonbone Chair. Nice. Oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Um, yeah, apparently a big inspiration to for George. And having mm-hmm. read the first two chapters, it's so fun being hit with so many things where I'm like, oh, that's so clearly an inspiration. Yeah. For a song of ice and fire, like the chair is made from, at least from what I've, you know, inferred, the chair is made from the bones of the dragon that the king who's sitting on it uh, slew. I don't know if that sentence quite came together, but I think you know, did. it's kind of like the Iron Throne, isn't it? Yeah. The blade of the enemies, so on. There's a character who's kind of like Hodor. Um, th- there are th- some grace called the Sithi who kind of make me think of the children of the forest. So there are like. Seeing the influences there are really cool. It is. So, Black Walder. I think you were going on... Oh, positives. The fact that he like served very well for Rob in those He rebellions. served for Rob. He's a, he's a, he is a fighter. He's clearly a charismatic ladies' man. And he's competent because he resolved the Siege of Seaguard. Or his brother failed to do the same in River Run. But is um, competent but con- something we're looking for in an evil fray? I mean, is competence a bad thing in this case? We put we put Walder Frey in D for being cunning. That's a great point. Maybe D is a good place for him. That's true. I was thinking either D or E. Hmm. My I I I'm thinking a little more D with him. That's just for the yeah. stuff he's done with like his cousins because that didn't really seem completely like uh, consensual or chill. Uh, which just in terms of yeah. bad things is pretty up there. Yeah, just just a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, and also the whole like, I don't know. I think he'd probably be one of the worst people who could inherit yes. the twins. Yes, yeah. I, pretty... I think maybe Blackwalder E. Edmund D. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's go with that. So I think that I think Edmund's definitely like better. 
but yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a Ed, better Edwin than is, of like is unknowingness, so it's not that much better. He, he is the lesser of two evils. Yeah. Um. Yeah. See, I'm I'm now looking at F. Like, who the hell is gonna go in F? Uh, my my main thought for F was Lothar. Oh, that's a good point, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Although he's not on this particular list. He's not. He will be a fun one to talk about. Yes, we were, this is probably going to be part one of two. So we'll do one on my channel, one on Fantasy Haven's channel, and we'll have more details on that in the future. I realize I haven't said that yet, so it's it's good to let people know. Yes, well, this stream will be basically the the first two main branches of Frey, mm-hmm. um, which also happens to be most of the the main Frey characters we know of. Yeah. So, so we have two pictures left because Walder is currently glued to yes, the. Yes, he cannot be moved. He cannot. So he's let's, immobile. So I'll say let's. We've basically done Stevron's branch now. I will say let's add in a couple of. Shall we say that? Wait, no. Okay, ignore me. I um, had I had two exactly two ideas on people to add, though I'm not sure if we so, have plans for them for yours. So I'd be also uh, okay with keeping them. Okay, let, let's let's see how it goes. My thought were big and little Walder could be fun to rank. They'd be fun. They are because they're both... some of the more we've gotten to know them. Probably some of the most mm. out of the praise. I mean, one of them is a Craycall and one of them is a Blackwood. So they're later down the line. They are later down the line. So let's let's go these two and first, I'm, and then we can. I'm, I'm gonna I'm there. gonna need some phrase that actually have characters. I was in thinking my the same thing. We don't want to have all. Otherwise, I'm, I'm going to be video. ranking like. White Walder Frey. <laughs> yeah, we like, don't want has that. No personality. Is there so, a Walder um, the Grey? Ooh, there isn't a Grey. There's a Red Walder, a White Walder with an A, a Black Walder, a Fair Walder, a Fat Walder. A Fat Walder or Fat Walder? Fat Walder. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Oh, I There's a really weird bit in um. The Red Wedding in Game of Thrones, where no, is it the Red Wedding, where there are a bunch of Frey girls come out and they're all saying their names, and then there's like a joke where uh, Walder Frey can't remember one of them, and he's like Walder, Waldina, and then she says, "I'm whatever." She and it says is a different the show name too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a show only. Oh, got thing. it. I thought you were saying that was. In the um, door. But what I found, find kind of weird is that all of the names of the Frey girls, like they are all made up for the show. Oh, what, Which is really? odd, because, like, there's an entire appendix. There's such a wealth of names. Yeah, it's very odd. It's like when, um, the, the show had a few weird bits like that, where they would sort of make something up, even though it was there, and, like, you could just Google it for in five seconds and find it. Yeah. Like, with, um, Tywin Lannister talking to Tommen. It's or a great it's scene the first. He's like, yeah, it's like, why? What? Yeah, really. <laughs> just, just find a Targaryen king who matches... The message. Yeah, there have been nineteen to... of them. I'm sure you'll find one. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, who can? Who else can we do? We can. We've got these um... two. Let's let's go with. Okay. So. Uh. Yeah. You pick. You pick. Mustache Mysterious. man. Is my pick. Which one? Sorry. The guy with the mustache. I forget his name. Mustache man. That is Sir Jared. Jared. Sir Jared. Frey, got it. Sir Jared Frey. Grey Waste Tim said he's currently reading. Romance of the Three Kingdoms. I want to do that too. Uh, but want to do Conan and Elric on my own channel. Yeah, Elric inspired um, Blood Raven, didn't he? That character. Yeah. Um, so okay, this is so... one of the other pies, right? Jared is in fact a pie, yes, along with Rhaegar. So Got it. Jared, I don't like how I drew his nose looking at it. That was not intentional. I promise. Yes, I like it. It's it's um, Squidwardy, he, and I think it fits the it's personality. It's very Squidwardy. Uh, yeah, he's he's a uh, he's a stooped, graying, pockmarked old knight, Jared Frey. He is Walder Frey's fourth son. Mm-hmm. Yes, he's Walder Frey's fourth son, and the first son by his second wife. So Walder Frey's second wife, it was a swan. Got it. And yeah, and he had Jared Frey with her, and. Jared is, let me, hold on, let me find Jared. So, similar to Rhaegar, we assume he was something to do with the Red Wedding, but he's never actually mentioned. Yeah. As being as being there or doing anything there. His, his he, son-in-law and son are killed at the Red Wedding. Yes. 
which is kind of rough for him. But that brings me on to another point, which is he's a liar, right? So he lies that Rob transforms into a wolf. Allegedly. <laughs> it's apparently it's a lie. You it's know, a that, that's what the, area. That's what the Starks will tell you. Yeah. Um, that's what Mandley would tell you. But the and also, you know, not only does he lie about that, he also lies that Lord Wyman Mandley's son died sacrificing himself to save Walder Frey, Lord Walder, from Rob the Werewolf. Which is such a ballsy lie to tell someone that their son wasn't murdered by you and your family, but was actually killed by Rob Stark turning into wolf. Yeah. Because he sacrificed himself. It's so scummy. And <laughs> not only that, he lies about his own son. Like when he talks about his son and son-in-law being killed, he says they were both killed by Rob. It's like, dude. So, yeah. I have I have a positive. He has a okay. line that I really like in dance. Um, okay. He's talking with Davos, and Davos says, Jared of House Frey, I name you a liar. And then Jared said, some men w- may cry when slicing onions, but I never had that weakness. If you are indeed a knight, sir, defend that slander with your body. Mm. Which, okay. I like that, the onion knight. Yes. And he, he does take out his sword, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. So he's, 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 he's a act- liar, he's but he's willing to back like, it up. Yeah. You know, th- there, is, there is some honor in that. For is sure. there? I guess. I, I, I don't know. There's he, more he's honor willing than to be he like, Come on, let's fight him. then. Yeah. yeah. Is it honorable to defend a lie with your life? It's more honorable than not defending the lie. But yeah, I yeah, okay, yeah. I, I I will give you that. There there he clearly has some kind of knightly honor. Yeah, cuz he is a so knight and he's an also extent. he's one of the more like heard of phrase. So I guess he appears in the first book too. Yeah. Yeah, he um isn't wasn't he supposed to take part? Does he take part in the tournament? Uh, he, his sons did, but he's too old. And then he's a captive ah. of Tywin in book two, which is, uh, mm. pretty good. Arya sees him being ransomed at Harrenhal. It's, see, the first time you read these books, these are just, like, random names popping up. Yeah. And then you go back and you're like, oh, the Frey Pie Man was ransomed? When did this happen? Yeah. I forgot but, it was yeah, a pie. I... I got so hyped about that line. And, anyway, <laughs> I forgot he's just a pie now. He is just a pie. Um, oh, one thing we didn't mention just to quickly go back about Rhaegar being a pie uh, yeah Aenys does in fact eat Wyman's pies so there's a chance there is a non-zero chance that Aenys eats his son oh that's fun in a pie what if oh I've just I've unlocked a new theory oh for goodness sake what if here we go this is meant to be like symbolic of like what if Aenys ate Rhaegar the other ones somehow (laughs) As in, are we talking the Targaryens? I'm talking Targaryens. I'm saying maybe there's something it, it, either symbolic, symbolic or literal there. Like, it what is does symbolic that mean? in how Aenys, as the first son and heir and successor to Aegon the Conqueror, instead of continuing to build upon his legacy, came in as a weak king and could have basically stumbled at the first hurdle and kneecapped yeah. House Targaryen straight away, which led to a chain of events. That resulted so, in Rhaegar. You know what my thought Trident. is that I actually quite I, I quite like this. So Rhaegar for- was like obsessed with prophecy, right? That's like a main staple of the mm. character. And yes. he, it seems, at some point unearths this prophecy that Viserys shares in House of the Dragon, that the prince that was promised will be born from his line or whatever, and that the Targaryens need to unite the realm against the White Walkers. What if that prophecy that he discovered, that he rediscovered, was written down by Aenys? Because Aenys' succession was unstable. He was bookish and seems like he'd care more about the prophecy than Magor would. And if somebody would write it down, I think during that era, it probably would have been him. Hmm. Because I think if there's a time where that prophecy is going to get lost, it's going to be the dance. I think we're going to see the loss of that prophecy in Hot D. And I think that wow. it could be possible that Aenys wrote it down and then the kind of metaphorical meaning of all this which is kind of roundabout way of saying like yeah, maybe it's saying that it up. the recording of this prophecy is something that doomed Rhaegar ultimately oh oh okay i i was like okay you're, you're... i was in left <laughs> field for a while but i brought it back yeah i i, I i'm surprised you actually got that to, to its conclusion no i like that yeah i i might make a video about that now that's uh huh see he's coming up with all the ideas no i'm left with nothing it's just me someone, being tired. 
<laughs> you wait. You come up with good theories when you're tired. I hate to. I'd hate to live stream with you when you're when you're feeling active. Yeah, I know. You're gonna come up with some Preston Jacobs. Hey, he has a couple that I like. Well, that's what I, that's what I'm saying. You're gonna go, come up with some quality ones. Oh, good. Gotcha. <laughs> insane, thought... insane, but backed up by the text in of ways course. that shouldn't work. Moon satellites and all that. <laughs> I like Preston a lot because he doesn't take himself too seriously. Yeah, me too. It's, he's pretty fun. And the there are some is great theorists too. who go a bit, who kind of act like everything they come up with is objectively right. And even if yeah. it's not in the next book, that's because Martin is wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Someone commented, wait, unironic to baby fan said, backing up a lie with physical threats is not honorable at all. Um, <laughs> that's a good point. I think it's very honorable. I think, I think it's I think more we, honorable uh, than the alternative. We chose a strange hill to die on by saying he's an honorable man because he threatened to fight Davos for calling him out for being a liar. I got another ad. Oh, I didn't. You're raking it in. Hmm. It'll be a million ever time to oh. So let's, where shall we put Jared? So he's a liar. He lies about Wyman's son to his face. He lies about his own son's death, which is just kind of weird. Like, you'd think he'd be, he'd be emotional about that. Um, very cynical. But and he also he, has a, and he has a good line. I I will defend that. He does line have a good line. Breath. And he, he is he is a knight, and you know he does you know. I, I'm acting like that's somehow a positive. In the Song of Ice and Fire, where it's clearly a big I'm... theme that just because you have the title of sir doesn't mean that you're a good person. I think that uh, I'm gonna say either D or E is what I'm thinking. Yeah, I was let's go more D than E. D because I think he's worse than Rhaegar because of the nature of his lying. I would agree with that, but he's also not as bad as the two in E. I don't think. No. Honestly, no, no. I'm now that I'm thinking more about it. I think Black Walter might be F. I think we may need to rearrange some of this. Yeah. Let's let's take it before we do this last prey on the chart. Who we have a picture of? Let's take stock of what we have at present. Mm. So S T R I think is set in stone. Yeah, the two Aegons. Yes, and I think Stevron honestly could be verging on A. If I'm being... could be the only reason he was brought down was because I was nitpicking about the fact that his son that he apparently didn't raise his son in in the family. Yeah, I, I think I wanted A originally. Honestly, let's go with A because if Stevron had raised Ryman well, and it was just that you know Ryman was just not was an unruly son, um, Stevron would probably be S tier. So let's pop yeah. him up to A. I'm, I'm good because he's that. he's ultimately he would make a good lord, mm-hmm. and all of this is relative considering most Freys just seem to be active, actively scumbag. horrible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Pataire I think is pretty fine where he is. Yeah, in terms of just being cowardly but still being yeah. bad. We 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 don't know enough about what Rhaegar has done. Just that he's like a smarmy. Yeah, he's. I think the fact that he's kind of an unknown. And it's yeah. just that kind of uh, just kind of yeah. arrogant guy. I think C is a pretty yeah. decent spot for him. C, C is the kind of, we don't know much about you, but we know enough to know that you're afraid. Yeah. And Basically. then Walder and D, we still think that's... Yeah, we boosted good. him a bit for, for, for being cunning and being on the grind and not being like a complete idiot. But mm-hmm. And I do, I genuinely think, I, I applaud the way he handled Robert's Rebellion, because I think like... In terms of just getting involved in a war that you pretty much have no stake in, uh, that was kind of the best way to do it, to just save the lives of his mm. family and his people. Like, it wasn't yeah. honorable, but it was it was pretty maverick. Yeah. Almost but honestly, was. looking at this list, it does feel weird to have, like, Jared on the same tier as Walder Frey himself, who literally came up with the Red Wedding. Yeah, so that's how we should bump Jared. Or, I don't know, because the thing is, Ryman is below Walder because Ryman's incompetent. Mm-hmm. But Black Walder is on, is on the same level of Ryman, but we were saying Black Walder is actually quite competent. So, okay, here, I think, first off, before we reshuffle anything else, I think Black Walder F. Yes, Black It's almost like tier lists are complete... I know. Nonsense. I, I, yeah. So, okay, okay. So, yeah, Black, Black Walder F. Black Walder F. He, yeah, he hasn't... Yeah, I think we're thinking too much in terms of... We, I think we need to decide whether this is based on, like, wholesome down to evil. I think... Kind of thing. 
I think it's kind of. I think the two axes is, would have been a good way to do this because we yeah, can have yeah, the, the like wholesome and good, the like evil. good as a ruler axis, and then like but... competent, incompetent. <laughs> so in that case, I yeah, I think um... bumping Walder down to E. Is that what you're thinking? I'm I, honestly, I think I think we could put Ryman down to F. Honestly, really. Yeah. Make that Just case. He, ha- he hasn't really got any... Re- he, like Blackwater, he p- takes part in the Red Wedding, he, he's a murderer, he's a selfish dude. Um, the only difference is that Blackwater is more competent, but... That's fair. And then Lord then Lord Walder, I think, c- can go to E. <laughs> I'm looking back at Ryman's page real quick, just to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. We're taking this seriously, guys. We're... Oh, yes. This is... Life and death here. You know it's a you know it's a proper tier list stream. Oh, you know why we had Ryman higher, and I'm gonna stand by this and defend it. Oh, because he's because he saved the backfish's life. He did, and he and he fell off a horse, and everyone laughed at him. Yeah, so I I think yeah okay. I think E is a fitting spot for him because I think the thing with Blackwalder is he's actively horrible and like just seems to be malicious in everything he does, and, and he would. He's a scarier option for Lord because he's more competent. Bingo. Whereas if um, if uh, Ryman's Lord, I don't think anybody's going to respect him enough to fear him or anything. Yeah. The same with Edwin. Yeah. Yeah. I think that I think bumping Walder down to E could be good. Because yes. I think that yeah, having the two that. of them in E is kind of like the duality of it. Yes. We have like the chaotic evil afraid. versus lawful evil, essentially. Smart evil versus dumb evil. That's more appropriate yeah let me see i'm having trouble moving things again but it'll fit. oh there we go much better okay do we think everybody else is okay uh let's have a look we have um, b empty currently do we think anybody's a b a b oh how do we determine a b so a b would have to be they're better than the sort of peter Rhaegar. we know you've done bad stuff we don't know enough to judge you a is like you seem like a good person. B would have to be. I think honestly, B feels like the no names. I think that's probably fair. B is is basically the people where we literally don't know anything about. Um, but also, is it worth discussing them if we don't know anything about them? Is it yeah, worth writing their name down? Maybe like maybe we just write down like the average fray in B tier. The average fray, yeah. Yeah. Well, there are see there are some minor phrases that have like a small descriptor that just gives you just a tiny bit about their character, which is quite interesting. Like Aegon like, Bloodborne. Like Aegon Bloodborne, or S- Stefan Frey is known as Stefan the the Sweet. We never meet him, so what does that mean? Is he nice? I assume he was referring to taste. <laughs> He's not in a pie. Ah, uh, not yet. Not yet. That's the epilogue of wins. Walder eaten bites into a pie. Like, uh, this it's is... just going to be the. Uh, what you is put it? sugar in this. Is it the it's end like of Stephon. season six of Game of Thrones? Yeah. <laughs> Stefan's in my Ugh. pie. In God. fact, Stefan the Sweet is the brother of Fair Walder Frey's, or I think it refers oh. to him being good looking. Maybe it's just a good. Oh, that's probably it. Yeah. Because their father, their mother, sorry, is a Harding, so I get the impression that they're like the good looking Frey's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's a fair point. I think that's probably it. Which is a uh, pretty high praise for a Frey. Look at my notes for like Fair Walder Frey. I have how how should I pronounce it for the women? Walder, Walder. I, either way, I, it's it's close enough as long as we know who yeah. it is. Fair Walder Frey. I put prose beautiful, described as being beautiful, well, or, or at least attractive, which is a miracle considering her family. Mm-hmm. It's just a pro in itself that she managed to be good looking. Yeah, they're all described as like what, like Walder. stoats or something, some kind of. Yeah. Ground animal. Could Arthur Dane beat Goku in a fight? I've never seen Dragon Ball, so I don't know. All right, should we should we move on to Yeah, the, the last the last fray. The last fray ever. Yep. In all of a song of ice and fire. He looks tired. Psych. Oh, actually Two more, two more. There's one I don't have art of that I wish I did. Okay. So who's who's the one we do have art of? 
The one we have is Emon Frey. Got it. This is Walder Frey's second son, who is married to Jenna Lannister, Tywin's sister. I put him in a video, and I forget which video. It might have been your history of House Frey. Yeah, I think it is. I, I have the Im- I have this image of him downloaded him on. Uh, yeah, he's like bald wiki. and chinless. Yeah, he's described as being, yeah, basically, very sort of cowardly. He's he's a very nervous, anxious little bald yeah. man. Oh, and we see I mean, him in the interactions with Jenna with Jamie. That's a that is a really mm. good chapter. I like that chapter a lot. And he he is the the new Lord of Riverrun. Yes. Um, and he's the one who thinks he's Lord Paramount of the Trident. Mm-hmm. So he thinks that he's taken over House Tully's position, and then is Jamie's like, no, little finger is hmm. not you. He I is described by Jamie's thoughts as a dullard who had lived in terror of Tywin Lannister. I don't blame him. Yeah, me neither. But yeah, again, it's weird. The phrase are either like cunning or dumb. Yeah, there's really no in between. It's pretty feast or famine. Yeah, yeah. A so, fretful yeah, man um, with nervous hands. Mm. Mm. It, it's see when I looked into it, I don't even remember this when I first read it. But apparently, um, apparently J- Jamie thinks back to the fact that Jenna. I think is it Jamie chapter. There's something about how Jenna would like, always openly flirt with you know knights and traveling people, whatever. Um, and no one would say anything because obviously it's Jenna Lannister. You can't say anything, and Emmon would just yeah. awkwardly sit there fingering his food. And um, it's sort of the implication seems to be that not all of Jenna's children are Emmons. Yeah, I think that's probably accurate. Um, and it, it said something like, "No one dared accuse accuse them of being bastards, least of all Emmon." Mm-hmm. Plus, I really like the like little character moment with the. Uh, I guess Tywin protested this match for his sister when he was like ten years old, which is pretty yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like, "This doesn't make any sense." But of course, Tywin's father was. I mean, yeah. If if Walder Frey is going to get a marriage <gasps> oh. to a Lannister, he must have been able to do that because Tito Frey was such a pushover. So hear me out. Mm-hmm. I I think this guy's in B tier because I'm realizing oh. he is not a traitor. He's always been on the side of the Lannisters because That's of his marriage true. to Gemma. He did not he's do the right wedding, not... and he's always been mm-hmm. just loyal to that side. Yeah, yeah, he's he's him and his sons are on the Lancer side from the beginning. Yeah, so, I think that yeah. I think he's not terrible. Like he's he's nervous. He's not a great mm-hmm. guy, but he's not like openly a traitor, breaking yeah, guest no. right. He, as he he just seems like he's cowardly. He's a bit dim. He seems a bit kind of like snooty, as with all phrase. But yeah, he he doesn't seem like an actively bad person. I think he's a good example of a B tier friend. That he is a B, he is a B tier Frey, yeah. He gives me the impression of he would have been part of the Red Wedding. Oh, for sure. If he, but he just if he was not side. married, yeah. He just yeah. Okay, I see you, Lord Emmon. Yeah, it's it turned out better for him than I expected. I was expecting like C or D. And yeah, he's he's not too bad. No, no. It is it is it is quite funny the sort of the visual we're given of. Jenna Lannister is this very boisterous, charismatic, uh-huh. uh, you know, curvy woman compared to Emmon, who's this small, sort of skinny, awkward man. Um, it's, you know, very sort of, it's quite fun imagery. All of Tywin's siblings are awesome. I really they are, wish they we are saw more of like them. Bright, charismatic, cool people. Yeah. And Garion doesn't show up until the King's Moot and Feast, so we don't really get to see much I of I beg your either. pardon? Hmm? It's, uh, he shows up on his on ship, the silence. The uh, he's, oh, he's see, making his yeah, claim yeah. for the king's mood. He becomes the king of the Iron Islands. How how can he be doing that when he's busy ruling over all of the stone men? Oh, that's true. I do I do that, buy that theory. I think that that's probably fair. Remember that um something George said about going down a certain path with Tyrion. A certain mm-hmm. subplot that he then completely scrapped. Yeah, he said I there generally... was like some dream that he kept trying to write in for Tyrion involving the Shrouded Lord, and it just didn't end up working out. It had to be. Um, I genuinely think like it could be Jerrion. I think that so. Jerrion is the Shrouded Lord, and it was Tyrion sort of 
dreaming about. I don't know if was it a dream. I thought it was like an act. act I thought it was I, Tyrion so meeting I think the it's, crowd. Of I think it ended up as a dream in the text. I think that he initially envisioned it as like a chapter when Tyrion went to see the Shrouded Lord. Mm, uh, yeah. If I recall, because I, I I was bored at work a while ago, and I just went through a bunch of old like blog posts specifically about dance, just to see the publication process, and I saw some stuff about that. Someone said, uh, Emin loses a son to Rickard Karstark. Poor Yeah, Emin. actually, um, Emin and Jenna have lost two out of four sons already. Oh, yeah, um, that's true. Tion Frey is killed by Rickard mm-hmm. in his cell. And that's a cool Cleos name. Frey, it is. And Cleos Frey, the eldest, is killed by uh, bandits or outlaws, you know, when yeah. he's uh, helping Brienne I was escort say, was he the, Yeah, he was the one with Brienne and Jamie. I always I get yeah, his death mixed up. I always think he gets killed by the boulder that Brienne pushes, but that's other people. No, I think he gets shot with arrows and then falls off his horse, but he's still stuck to the um his his leg gets stuck and so he's just like dragged. It's like a very Oof. a very sort of um pathetic death. Um and then and so they have two other children that are still alive. There's Lionel and Alder, and that that one is Red Walder because he's a squire at Castle Rock. Gotcha. And it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if. Uh, that one looked. That Red Warder was the one who looks especially not like Emmon. Yeah. That's just like a headcanon thing. And then um, Cleos has two twin sons, who uh, Tywin and Jamie. Um, mm-hmm. So Tywin, I think, is the eldest of those twins. So Tywin is technically the. Oh, it's heir Tywin to and Rivalum. Willem, actually. Ty- that's it. Tywin and Willem. I was going to say, naming Tywin... twins after a father and son seems kind that of. That is odd. Weird. Uh, Tywin and Willem are um, the heirs to Riverrun after Emmon. Nice. Willem, Willem, Willem. This Lem Lem and Got it. Yeah. Lem. From what yeah, I've oh. seen, looking at Red Walder, I think that there's nobody really knows why he has that nickname. At least it hasn't been said in the text yet. So some think it might be because he has red hair. Um, oh, I th- I, my assumption is just his name's Walder and he's from the Lannister branch. That was my so thought as well, Walder. but the red hair thing, I think, went pretty well with what you said about we could, he could be a bastard. Uh, that could be cool. Yeah. No, you ju- you saying Lem, Lem Lemon Cloak, I never connected the idea that Lem is short for Willem. Yeah, it is, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know name and How can he be, Wait, hold on. But there there isn't a Willem Lonmouth. There is a Richard Lonmouth. I have no idea. I don't. That was just kind of saying it. Lemon, no, no, I'm saying Lem, Lem Lemon Cloak being Richard Lonmouth is a theory. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. That's one that I haven't really delved into a ton. Me neither. I just... I, I, trend, I tend head. to stay away from, like, the people from Robert's Rebellion are other people <laughs> yeah. thing. Like, I, don't, I think okay. Ashara Dane is probably just dead, but... Here's my hot take. I don't know how hot it is. A Lem Lemon Cloak might be the single worst character name in all of A Song of Ice and Fire. There's, I mean, Othar shit, right? Othar, Othar shit. Isn't that somebody? I'm not wrong. Somebody back me up in the what? chat. There's I mean, Othar, Othar, Othar shit. I don't know. I've just got okay. Uther shit. It's U T H E R S H E T T. Uther shit. Uther shit. He's a knight and he's a member of House Shet of Gulltown. Okay, that's that's. He shows up That's in Sansa's great. only chapter so far of wins. <laughs> is is he with um the Mad Mouse? Uh, Uther Shit arrives at the gates of the moon uh, to compete in Lord Robert Aaron's tourney for place in the Brotherhood of Winged Knights. He flirts with Miranda Royce uh, along with Ossifer Lips, and he's interrupted by Elaine. That's all I have on him. He is a See, skinny, for... ginger-haired young man, no more than 18 years old. His face is covered in pimples, which he attempts to hide behind his whiskers. That's a bad name, but then Ossifer Lips. Yeah, Ossifer, yeah, we've stumbled into a, a gold mine of apparently oh, shitty Ossifer names Lips. in the Since when was there a character called Ossifer Lips? I think also this one chapter of wins, so maybe neither of them really exist once the book actually True. comes out. But Schrodinger's There's a Lips. House Lips? I wonder what the sigil is. The only person in this imagine. house is Ossifer Lips, who appears in <laughs> The Winds of Winter. So we might have discovered the most recently added house in A Song of mm. Ice and Fire, House Lips. 
I also need to. I'm gonna look into how shit. shit. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do a. How, how shit, shit it does exist in feasts. So it's, it's, it's older. Okay. Mm. It's among the noble houses uh, who are part of the Lord's Declarant. House is how shit close to House uh, Tollet. I have no clue. Their sigil is seagulls, which is fucking awesome. <laughs> Just the oh, I wonder seagulls if, I wonder and the name is perfect. I wonder if they're bannermen of the toilets. They could be. Yeah. And Lips has two Ps for those who are searching at home. So it's a fantasy name. I was, do- yeah. I was, doing, a, I was doing a toilet shit joke for those who didn't catch on. Uh, valid Starkiller. With such names, I can see why Damon hated the Vale. <laughs> yeah. Those waves seemed cool. We've, that was. Have we now demonetized the stream because we've said shit? Nah, I, from what I've heard, they uh, have updated the YouTube like swearing thing, so yeah, it's like less uh, strict than it had been. And mm. I think you get like a certain number of swears, which I don't think we've exceeded. So we're probably fine. Cool. So I can say, uh... no, I was going to drop. I was going to drop a a spicy c word, but I didn't. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well. Um, thank you, Cody, for your comment in the chat, by the way. He loves our yeah, videos. Yeah, thank you. I really I appreciate that. I love you, Cody. I want to marry you. Okay, let's... You have one more fray through. you wanted to go over, and I think we have just about time for that. Okay, so the final fray is... Who is... He is... I think he's Jared's brother. He's Jared's brother. So he's the only other child of Walder Frey's marriage with Lady Swan, and that is Septon Lucian. Ooh, I misspelled Septon. So, yeah, Septon uh, Lucian. That's a cool last name. Speaking of names. So what was the name again? Lucian. It's uh, it's um uh, L U C E O N. Septon Lucian. That's like a evil so Lucian. I like that. He's a member of the faith. There's one mm-hmm. Septon and two Maces, I think. Gotcha. So he's the he's the Miguel Targaryen of this family. Got it. So what? Is, let's see Lucian. What does he do? Spepton. Um, Spepton Lucian <laughs> is my favorite character. Um, so he almost becomes the High Septon in a Feast of Crows. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. He's, he's running to be the High Septon, and I, it, he's like 10 votes off or something. Mm-hmm. 7 votes off. and then, 9 votes off. And then, like, a bunch of sparrows or something break in and basically threaten uh, the most devout to vote for uh, the High Sparrow instead. Wow. Just full-on, like, political violence. Um, so, Septon Lucian, all we know about him is I have one pro and one con. So the pro for um Spepton Lucian is that he is again he's on the fray grind along with his father he he almost becomes the, the high Septon which would be That's a pretty big good. like point in the fray's favor in terms of just power it is. yeah you know Walder Frey was like I need one of you to be a maester you can become the grand maester at some point I need one of you to be a Septon you can be the high Septon mm-hmm. uh one of you will be lord of white harbor in the future don't worry we're working lord of river now. run lord of river run um Lord of Casterly Rock. Oh, yeah. Oh, think that about, oh wait, think about it. Think about it. Jenna and Emmons children aren't that far away. No, because, because there's not the Lady of Casterly Rock. The Lady of Casterly Rock is Cersei. Mm-hmm. Tyrion doesn't count because he's an exile and so on. After Cersei, it's well, Kevin's dead. It's Tyrek. Oh. It is Tyrek. It's next in line. Tyrek's not next in line. Um, Maybe it's Lancel third? is. Lancel, but he's probably. Not gonna die. Yeah, no. Lancel no, actually. Tyler... Lancel renounced his uh, lands and titles. So That's true. Lancel's not That's in line. true. So and then so yeah, because Tyrek isn't a son of Kevin. He's a son of Titus. I think. No, Titus was dead. I think it is Tigget. Tigget. That's one hell of a name too. Tigget Lannister. What the hell? Yeah. Tiget. Um. Tig. Anyway, I think they just call him Tig. Tig. Tig Lannister. Uh, so yeah, so Kevin's, so Lance was renounced it. Kevin's dead. I can't believe Kevin is a. We're just bringing out all the bad Song of Ice and Fire names now. Yeah. Kevin Lannister. My car's name um, is Kevin. 
one of his chill one one of one of them is killed by um Karstark. I mm-hmm. forgot which one. And Kevin has a a son and a daughter who are still alive. So we have Cersei, then we have son, then we have daughter, then we have Tyrek. Then after him we have Jenna Lannister, and then that it would be uh, Jenna's grandchildren. So Jenna Lannister is fifth in line. No, fourth in line. Wow. Me. Yeah, it could so be that's quite close. Yeah. Did you like that Lannister family tree? I really did. Thank you. Um, so what was the so, what was the con for uh, Lucian? Yes, I went off on a bit of a tangent there, didn't I? Um, the the con is that he seems like a generic sort of corrupt septon because he mm-hmm. hosts a supper for thirty of the most devout to try and buy their votes for the election. Ah, uh, I see. So he's he's on the grind, but he's you know grease and palms. He's making moves. He's, but he's a like corrupt. Every candidate for high septon except the high sparrow was in that boat, was doing something similar. Yeah, the High Sparrow is not corrupt. He just sends his men to burst in and threaten you with violence if you don't vote for him. What if fine. Lucian is the High Sparrow? <gasps> oh, no. We've never he seen ran them in a, a room populist together. campaign against himself. Exactly. He was Galaxy like, I'm a, corru- I, I'm a corrupt prey. Look at me. I'm going to be High Septon. But then he like... He inspired that him. movement. He rolled to around have in an mud. enemy. Yeah, and then he comes out like, I am the High Sparrow. Screw this guy. Yeah, it's perfect. Boom. We've come up with like five different theories in one Yeah, screen. we have. I do, the one I came up with, I'm, I'm still thinking about. I like that theory. Which one? The, the uh, Aenys and Rhaegar one. The Aenys and Rhaegar. Okay, that one. That's not worthy of any discussion. That's, it's that was, worthy of a lot of discussion. I'm very it was impressive it. that you brought it back at the end, but that that's like a, I don't want people taking that seriously. I'm that's what I'm taking me. it so seriously. Uh, so we George think in, plan. my thought um, is yeah. B for Lucian. Average phrase, yeah, corrupt, but on the grind. That kind of summarizes the phrase. Doesn't I'm it? putting him just below the average prey. Great. So yeah. I think that's. Uh, I think that's our ranking for uh, today. The, the the top two, bra- the first two branches of House Frey. All the other Freys are like Zia and Zachary and sort of, you know, uh, Willem. You know, all, all the ones that we don't know much about. Stefan. Yeah. Brian. There's a Brian Frey. Shout out to Brian Frey, I did, my There's favorite. a Brian? That's awesome. I, I Under him, I literally just have a question mark. That's great. I didn't know such under, a name um, existed. Under story. Zachary and Zia, I did put Pro's cool name. I would agree with that. Yeah, that that is all of them. So the in part two on my channel, we'll be looking at the Craig Hall branch, which is where most of the other named ones are. Well, not named, but most of the other character ones are. Um, the Blackwood branch, which has Lame Lothar and uh, mm-hmm. Little Walder. And then the Rosbys, who are the know the wholesome ones and then i'm thinking we've got some honorable mentions too oh for sure like <laughs> i i do want to quickly say here uh that there are there's under honorable mentions there's one fray that isn't in the appendix but he's mentioned as being in the hands tourney in the first book and i can't remember what his name is he's just like a random fray who's never brought it's like theo just huh. there's just a theo fray it doesn't gonna, belong to the main branch. I have to step away for a second. One second, please. Sorry. Ooh. Oh, what happened there, guys? Too many theories. The theory police came. George R. Martin is listening to this live stream, and he realized that Quinn has spoiled half of Winds of Winter. He, he's revealed the ending that Jingle Bell Frey... Is the stallion that mounts the world? HBO police are taking him away. Let me look at the chat while we're waiting. Hey, sorry, I'm back. It should still be. Just looking at the chat. Yeah, someone said um, Tommen is technically next. Yes, I completely forgot about Cersei's children. Um, but I that was probably because subconsciously I know Cersei's children are not going to survive for long. But that is true. Yes, Tommen and Marcella are still. 
in line for Costly Rock. That's fair. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. I can hear Great. you. Great. Sorry, I had uh, people coming to the door for some reason, but uh, I know that was a dramatic. Out. I was telling everyone that you, uh, that George Arman had come because you were spoiling his book. Yeah, it's fair. You were spoiling the ending with Jingle Bell. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, great. I that was really weird. Uh, everything went okay. No, I see Order sixty six was executed in my absence, but uh, I expected as much. Awesome. There we go. Well, I think we should wrap up then. Yeah, I agree. Well, thank you for uh, coming on the channel, Fantasy Haven. I, everybody should check out his uh, new April Fool's video that came out yesterday. And I think I'll have another video coming out today, actually. So I do. stay tuned I for that. To, I'll tell you that. Check, check out my channel. Subscribe to me. Um, I want to get more subscribers than Quinn, and then I'll stop talking to him. Uh, uh, he has expressed this plan to me before. So. I have. Um, and I also said if I went below him at any point i'll then come crawling back like a beggar and be like hey do you want to collab that's always what i assumed would be the case <laughs> i'm just afraid deep down yeah exactly we're all afraid <laughs> to a certain afraid. level i think and that if, opportunistic if anyone, instinct yes if anyone here is from fancy haven who hadn't subscribed to quinn subscribe to him check out his uh, video from yesterday it wasn't you. April yeah. Fool's. It happened to be April the 1st, but it's a serious theory. It's right? very serious, yes, along with my yeah. theory, Rhaegar theory. But... I've got, so, yeah, I've got a video coming out uh, in like an hour or two hours, which is going to be about um, Green Allies, House of the Dragon. It's a part two to my Black Allies video I made uh, like a month ago. And I'll be working on a Red Wedding video for next week. And I'm also setting up a Patreon this month. I believe that's... Ooh. Can I plug any more? Can I shill any more? Uh, I want to do merchandise... Um, send me uh, several thousand uh, pounds per month. Uh, pounds of all what? my videos are going to become exclusive. Uh, yeah, it's a joke. Yeah, sounds good. Well, it does. I believe I, we will. What was that? Yes, we. So we did the we did the classic. Let's wrap up, and then immediately. I'm yeah, like, let's it's go good to plug plug something else. If podcasts have taught me it anything, is. that's an important part. It is. Yeah. Great. Well, I um, believe... Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I need to stop rambling. Yes. Well, thank you all for watching, and we will see you all soon. Check out his see channel.